Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your Super Sunday show live from Manchester Airport. Hope you're all doing well. Plenty of people in the chat already. Good to see you all. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend so far and uh, we're looking forward to bringing you all at the aviation action here from Manchester for the next few hours. But um, apologies for the couple of minute late start, folks. As you can see, this is getting bigger. <laughs> We've added two more screens today. Did you not have enough, did you? <laughs> Didn't have enough, mate. Ah, uh, okay. Didn't have enough. And uh, it turns out, I realised when we got here that the way my brain thought it was going to work, it wasn't. So mm. uh, we had a bit of a play around, but we're, we're cooking on gas now. We're cooking on gas. I need one more adapter, guys. Just one more, I promise. <laughs> I think you've got a bit of a problem there, mate, I think. I know. I it's think I've a got a bit of an adapter an adapter uh, collection going on, I think. Yeah. But uh, welcome to the Super Sunday show, folks. I hope you're all doing well. And, of course, up on the roof, we got Mr. Matt Cam smith bringing you all the apron action with a max pushback as well. Great start. Morning, everyone. Hope everyone's OK. How you doing, Matty? How was your show on Friday? Uh, my show was absolutely brilliant on Friday. Thank you, mate. Yeah, as usual, brilliant support and, uh, yeah, absolutely excellent. Thank you. The weather was nice as well for a nice change. Nice, mate. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it started off quite nice here, to be honest. I've just rolled my sleeves up. It's uh, it's quite bright. I've got my sunnies. Brownie's got his T-shirt on. There's a bit of cloudage coming across from that way, so I don't think it'll last too yeah. long, but we'll enjoy yes. it while we've got it. Yeah, Make the most a little of bit it. breezy up here, little, little, slight little bit, bit of a breeze and stuff up here, but nothing, uh, nothing to stop us. Good, good. excellent, hyped. And uh, of course, in today's stream, we've got all of the flight radar integration as well. Now goes the Austrian, which is our first departure for today, heading out to Vienna. Great stuff. Huge thanks to Flight Radar 24 for in. Uh, what, what's the word? In into into integrating integrating. See, there you go. Integrate. It'll it'll <laughs> come to me in a minute. It's. Uh, I'll I'll <laughs> give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> couple of aircraft on the taxi out. Seems like we've got a bit of a, uh, a queue forming down the end as well. Um, first of which, at the very front of the queue, is the uh, EasyJet flight out to Belfast. And uh, following that along is the Jet 2 A321, the standard 21 today. Uh, High Lib on the way to Lanzarote and the two aircraft you can see in your frame. First of which, of course, the uh, British Airways shuttle on the way down to London Heathrow and the second of which is uh, Ryan that's just arrived in from Dublin but uh, Matt Cam bringing you the views there of the 2E Max on the way out to Aspargos looking absolutely awesome in the sun up there today Matt lovely not quite mankini weather but it'll do <laughs> <laughs> listen what you do on the car park it's your business mate <laughs> <laughs> GTF, great to see you on Twitch. Hope you're doing well. Nathan Nine, hello, good morning to you. And a uh, big thank you to uh, Sam Hockaday. Two years of Airliners Live wow. membership. Welcome back, Sam. Two full years with a gold tail badge. Welcome in, dude. And uh, just as one shuttle's on the way out, another one is on the way in. Busy, busy. Nice, Wigsy. Get them knees up. Gary Bennett, good morning to you. And hello to the gentleman who said hello to us this morning. We uh, we didn't ask, catch your name. I don't think we asked. Sorry. I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm sure, uh, sure you bit, know who you are. A little bit preoccupied. A little bit. It's a little <laughs> bit. But uh, great to see you. Thank you for coming over and saying hello as well. British Airways shuttle in from London Heathrow and uh, getting ready to line up behind is the EasyJet. As Mike Nicholson uh, returns for 13 months of premium economy membership, saying good morning, lads and fellow viewers. Hello, welcome to you. Cheers for the 13 months, mate. 
and uh, Wayne tuning in. Welcome, Wayne, and James tuning in from New Zealand as well. Welcome to you. Don't see that very often. Easy jets getting loaded into the engine test bay. I was just going to say, I didn't see the tug then. I was like, why are they going backwards? <laughs> but I saw your camera was drifting. Reverse gear. Lee Davies, hello to you, welcome. Gifting an Airliners Live membership as well to uh, Carol Smith. <coughs> Cheers, mate, really appreciate that. First gifted membership of the day. Nice. So you've been busy, haven't you, Sunshine, last couple of days? Myself. Yeah. Yes, uh, a couple of people put in the chat as well, um, asking about the house move. It's going well, folks, it's going well. Half of me was like, a bit gutted I haven't been doing like a vlog of it not not for the channel but just kind of like to document it you know just to, for memories and stuff but it's been incredibly busy folks you know how it is <laughs> just running around like a headless chicken for the last few days but it's been really good thank you everyone I think sometimes with the um with stuff like that, I think um, it's just as memorable, you know, just getting stuck in and... That's it, yeah. Because when you're vlogging, it's like with anything, you, you're kind of preoccupied then. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you, we get too picky on things, don't we? We're like, uh, lighting and... <laughs> that angle. That angle, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. paint this wall three times at a yeah, different yeah, angle. Yeah. I had to walk into the room while the camera's already in the room to make it look like, you know, <laughs> it's like a, a bit of an alternate angle. It's like when you see these like hiking vlogs or you know like vlogs of people doing like exploring parts of the world and they're walking past the camera like that, but in reality they've like ran up, set the camera up, got all the settings right, run back, walk past. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah, you don't realise that when you're vlogging. You gotta walk past twice, you gotta you gotta walk past, put your camera down, go back, walk past again, go back, pick your camera up and then walk off. <laughs> And then you realise something wasn't set right. You got to do it again. <laughs> yeah. You got to stand there, like staring at the screen, like is that right? Mm. <laughs> Michael's currently travelling over from Scarborough to the airport for my 5:05 flight out this evening. Nice one, dude. On the way to Alicante. Hey. Enjoy it. Scarborough. Wow. Bit of a trek. Yeah, what uh, Andy doesn't realise, guys, is he's got uh, about a week of moving into his house, and then we're going to be uh, maybe moving into the new office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of moving. He's going to be moving things for the next month. <laughs> One thing I never, ever, ever want to see again in my life is wallpaper. I am yeah. sick already of <laughs> wallpaper. We, basically, in Dakota's bedroom, there was a feature wallpaper on one of the walls, and I was like, you know what, I'll just pull that off and then we'll paint the wall. Easy. How hard can that be? Mate. Mate, that... But, well, first of all, peeling the wallpaper off, I had some wallpaper remover as well, which is like a soapy wall to stuff. And that kind of made it easier. Peeling it off, but it was still dead hard. Like, it was splitting. It was just... You had to get your fingernails under there, get some scrapers under there. Just going at it and going at it and going at it. Finally got the wallpaper off. And what's underneath it? Another wallpaper. <laughs> so there's like some some like flowery, um, you know, butterfly wallpaper. Like, okay, fine, let's go. Like, start scraping well. out. This one had two layers of like sticky on it as well. So this one took even longer. And what was under that? Another wallpaper. <laughs> there was a polka dot wallpaper under that. It's like when does this end? Does this just go on forever? But eventually I got down to the the core of it, and yeah, it took about six hours in total. The whole process. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not about removing wallpaper. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Just leave it. <laughs> Jet to A321 departing out. Nice to see the uh, standard A321 on the way out to Lanzarote. Yeah, really nice. I've heard from a Jet 2 pilot actually who flies them that they're uh, quite overly kitted. I don't know, I'm not a pilot, so I don't know fully what they mean, but the flight deck has a lot of extra tools in there that they wouldn't normally have, you know, in a 321, like extra necessities, like the foot warmers and loads of um, basically like loaded in maps and stuff. And really? Yeah, yeah. They're, nice. they're really overly spec, they were saying. 
the uh, 321 Classics. So, because I asked him, I was like, what what, do, what do you prefer, flying the Neo or the Classics? And easily the Classics, because of how uh, overly spec it is. You know, very nice. It's full of uh, lots of uh, niceties for the pilots. Claire saying it's uh, sunny here in Edinburgh at the moment. Very nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. It's nice today. We'll take a bit of this. Yeah, it's uh, still not the warmest. I mean, that, that that wind is a bit chilly, but you know, it's a, it's a life world better than the last show, for example. Feels more like spring. Shuttle three Papa and A three nineteen lined up, ready to go. And Brian tuning in from sunny Danoon in Scotland. Welcome, Brian. The room is actually three inches bigger when you take each layer of wallpaper off. Yeah. I, I, I did read a fact that it was like rooms get bigger when you like, oh, get smaller when you paint the walls and stuff, but I don't, I don't think it's that, that noticeable. <laughs> Cheers, Plymouth Phil. Glad you're enjoying it, mate. Not a single cloud in Sheffield saying Cohen. Oh, can we have some of that, please? Just wow. Josh. Hello, welcome to you. And Hubley, hello. Smith having a fight up there. What's going on up there? Yeah. <laughs> is he like... <laughs> Matt's just like on the punch bag, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it windy up there, Matt? Sounds it. Yeah, it's pretty breezy. Just gusty. Yeah, like got it. It's like a, not a permanent breeze, just really gusty. Yeah. Nothing we're not used to, mate. And uh, Blaster Worm tuning in from Portsmouth. Hello, welcome to you. It's from a completely different direction this time, though. We've got the wind on our backs for a change. It's usually on our faces. Yeah, it's like a like a northwesterly, isn't it? Yeah. You at Heathrow? Nope, this is Manchester Airport. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Get your names in the chat if you are new. You tuned into the Super Sunday show. We've uh, got plenty of cameras on today. We've got a nice wide cam, zoomed in cam, myself, Andy. And the apron as well to bring you all the pushback. So uh, plenty of stuff going on alongside Flight Radar 24 integration as well. So uh, this is the place to be on your Sundays, folks. Make sure you set your alarms and uh, maybe have a bit of a lion and tune into Airliners Live about 9 o'clock here on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, you can watch ad-free on YouTube by heading over to Airliners uh, Live YouTube channel. Did you not use wallpaper stripper? I did indeed. It helped, but it still wasn't. Didn't make it a, a quick job, put it that way. But it helped a lot. Ryanair 737 rolling down the runway. 800 series. Hey, Malky. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day today, though. It is pretty gusty. I wonder if you'll see much of that on the aircraft arrivals. It's not a strong wind, but I think the, the fact that it's just all, all gusts is uh, going to make it a bit different for the arrivals. We do have the Emirates A380 on stand 12 at Terminal 1 at the moment. King of the Skies, I think, running a little bit late on the departure. The Manchester Geneva flight 737 taking an intersection departure. Next to leave us here at Manchester as Malky Stoddart supports the channel with a gifted membership. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for that. Thanks, you. Thanks, Malky. It's very kind. To brand new members on today's stream, if you do enjoy our content, you'd like to help support the channel, we'd really appreciate that. It helps keep all of our shows free for everybody. And the best way to support the channel is by gifting memberships. Hit the dollar symbol, then click Gifted Membership if you'd like to do that. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but you'll also make a uh, member's day as well because someone will get a free membership for a whole month. So rather than sending in donations, guys, the best way to support is by gifting memberships. 
Jet 2 on the roll, next out. And that's followed out by a TUI aircraft that we saw push back, and that's on the way to Aspargos as Luke returns. Crew seat member, 27 months. Good morning to you, mate. Two using a lot of runway there, as per usual. Really looking after them engines by not using too much thrust on the departure. And getting their money's worth by using that nice long runway here at Manchester Airport. Really busy scenes here at Manchester Airport this morning, though. Great to see. Yeah, plenty of Jet 2 aircraft. Uh, that one that just took off and another three on the move as well. Oh, nice, Brian. That's really cool, mate, from up here in Scotland. Yeah, so um, where we, I'm not going to say where because I know it's quite a sensitive topic, but um, there's a place where me and Jen go and stay with some family friends in Scotland, and they've got uh, ospreys uh, nesting as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool to see. Really cool. Hey, Loopy, thank you very much, mate, for the £2 donation. Smash them likes, he says. Cheers, Loopy. Listen, stop donating, mod, if you're a mod. <laughs> Thank you, mate. You know you've been at Barton Aerodrome too long when uh, you read Osprey and you don't think the uh, <laughs> you don't think the animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Osprey, where, where, where? DBB, welcome back for two months. Business class member. Yeah, doing very well, mate. Hope you're well as well. Cohen, we uh, we may be live for that, mate. Keep an eye out. Much different sound from these Max 8s. Cheers, Chris. And Peter settling in for a Sunday night stream session from Australia. Welcome, Peter. What time is it there, mate? Let us know. Moved, yeah. The King of the Skies is moving. It was on a really weird angle there for a moment. Yeah, it's definitely a weird pushback that one, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if it just edged over itself. <laughs> Graham saying, "Will you be attending um, uh, DSA Doncaster when it reopens? 125-year uh, lease has just been signed. Well, we went there for the final flight." Mm. So I suppose it would... Uh, There's not any, like, really good spots for streaming from there, though, is the problem. Like, yeah. we, we got quite lucky that day. And, you know, places like that are useful, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, the thing about Doncaster is they had so much variety back in the day as well, didn't they? Like, you'd see mm. all sorts. They even had them... Um, was this the um, oil spill response 727s were based there for a while. Uh, maybe they might return as well. But yeah, that, that's fantastic news that it's uh, signed the lease. I don't fully know what that means, though. I, I assume that just means, in essence, it's going to reopen. It, that seems that way. I can't see how else that would play out. Uh, I think the land is still owned by by Peel Group, isn't it? But they're leasing it back to the council. Right. <clears throat> I think that's how it's working. And, and as a result, the council now have the ability to get it back up and running as, a, as an airport. Benjamin, tuning in from Texas. Welcome to you. Hello. But, yeah, I don't know fully the ins and outs of it, though. I, I, I assume not many people do, to be fair. <laughs> There's probably yeah. a lot of things still... I've read a few it. things on Twitter, but I'm always very cautious of talking about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Jet 273 on the way out to Paphos. I don't think it's a terrible place for an airport, though, in regards to location, because, you know, anywhere on the sort of, um, you know, going east from here, you know, you're not really going to find any large commercial airports. <clears throat> what have you got? You've got, like, Leeds, Bradford, and I guess Humberside. That's mm. kind of it, really, in the whole of, like, Lincolnshire area, and obviously um, 
Yorkshire as well. Like, what what have you got? Maybe you can go up to the northeast as well. But and then obviously Manchester, of course. It's just not ideal for them. So, I Pete, so welcome to you. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in today. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Obviously, it's good that they've managed to get that reopened. Mm. I know that was something people were sort of really advocating for. Yeah. And if there is like a big, you know, first flight back, then I'm sure we'll uh, look to to be there for that. And then the uh, the Vulcan still there? Did that get moved in the end? I I'm wonder. not sure. Oh. The Vulcan with its famous last ever engine test. <laughs> <laughs> The last, last engine test. That Jet 2 7.3 on the way out to Innsbruck. Busy morning for uh, Jet 2 here at Manchester. It is, yeah. It's just non-stop at the moment, but all eyes to the king of the skies as uh, that starts to move shortly. The Vulcan is still there. Nice one, Susie. Dynamic Duo, welcome back for 20 months. Uh, 20 month of madness, may it continue. Thanks for all the fun times, team. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Welcome back as well. And uh, Beatty, no worries. Yeah, we um, we were there for the final departure. We heard the uh, radio transmissions and stuff, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was a quite a special stream, that one for us. And Yeah, a couple of the 2E staff reached out to us and said, thank you for capturing that. It was, it was amazing and all that. Yeah. It was very, very emotional as well. Joe saying gorgeous day out there today. It really is, Joe. Really is for now, anyway. For now. For now. <laughs> Mine, uh, Max on the departure out to Alicante. This touchscreen is transforming my life, by the way. Yes. Nice. I mean, even, you know, the Doncaster final departure that we caught, that was emotional for us, you know, and we, we, we are not, like, sort of there, you know, locals or spotting community, you know, we, we kind of just showed up for that. Yeah. And uh, even that was emotional for us. So I assume people who are local would have watched that. would have been hard to watch. Oh, I need to plug my laptop in. It's saying you're going to run out of battery in a minute. Roger, Dodger. That wouldn't be good. Well, uh, for anyone watching at home, we'll give you a little setup tour of what's going on down here these days. Did I uh, need to get another microphone out for today? Was that me reading? Possibly, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. yeah. I'll just check it. Uh, so, chat, this is the latest iteration of my little setup down here. <laughs> bit of audio, nice bit of encoding. So, this is what you guys are seeing at home, if you can kind of see that. And you can see the sort of speeds that we're putting in. Big shout out to Live View, awesome bit of kit. Audio coming through here. We got Mr. Matt Cam Smith on the Bluetooth as well. So he's coming through. And then uh, this is like, like the command studio where we can see everything. So I can see everything live here, guys. So um, obviously camera free is red and it's over in the big screen. So we know that that's going to you guys. We got a wide cam, zoomed in cam. Andy, as, as you can see, has gone missing. So there's a little, ah, there he is. Huh? <laughs> and I've got Matt Cam, so I can always see what, what everyone can see, just so we can choose what shot we're going to do. There's you guys in the chat up there, both sides, Twitch, YouTube, Flight Radar. Whoa. On the, uh, on the brand new ooh, touch screen. Ooh, yes. Then we've got Matt Cam's feed, the text, tech behind Matt Cam's feed. I am hiding the main program, by the way, so you guys can't see it. Mod chat, very important. Mod chat. So there you go, guys. It's got it's getting bigger every week down here, but hopefully so are the shows. That's the main thing. It just shows that your your support as well does go towards improving the shows as well. You can literally see the setup growing, Absolutely. new ideas, new bits and pieces to make the shows better. ATR really getting blown around there on a short final. Gusts feel like they've they've picked up a little bit. Mm. And as the uh, sun went behind a big cloud, oh, then plug this in. yeah, as the sun went behind a big cloud, then the temperature just really dropped. <laughs> Had to put my coat back on. I seen someone in the chat. I think it was Ian saying uh, he was shocked to see me wearing no jacket. <laughs> yeah, that didn't last long. <laughs> 
did not last long. But no, I'm really, really excited and hyped to see what comes of uh, Doncaster. Uh, mm, Doncaster. Yeah, definitely. We'll, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll be back there one day in the future. There'll be so many screens you won't be able to see out the window soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we do joke about that, being like one of them TV, you know, like... Uh, on a bit OB trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vision mixing, have like multiple people down there. That's the thing, you just don't realise, like, oh, should we add this to the show? And then it's like, oh, hold on, that's going to mean this and this and this and this. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we had to uh, get a touch screen for flat radar, really. It just makes it a lot more intuitive, a lot easier to use. And because we're duplicating that display out to you guys as well, it needs to be run through the PC, so... That was the latest addition, so a big thank you to your VIP support for helping improve the shows. And a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting the shows as well with uh, Kez returning for 20 months of Airliners Live membership. Thank you so much. And Joan gifting an Airliners Live membership to the community. Cheers, Joan. Thank you very, very much. And Jill returning for 22 months of fun and great plane spotting. Thank you very much, Jill. Long-term supporter of the channel as well. Really appreciate all your VIP support, guys. Thank you very much. King of the Skies taking a little bit longer than usual to start moving after the pushback. How about another pair of eyes to see it all? <laughs> it's, it's getting to that stage, mate, I'll be honest. Eyes on the back I, of your I think... Um, I've said it a couple of times on the show. I think it is getting to the point where we need to stop now. You've said that a few times. I know. I know. <laughs> Nathan, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. And obviously this all would not be possible without the support of not only the Aviation Society, but the Runway Visitor Park, really providing an incredible home for us here at Airliners Live. So let's get some 10 out of 10s. Make sure you come down to the RVP, guys. Spend a day here. Links will be in the chat well worth a visit and uh, we're super proud to be based here as well <clears throat> we really are that's Scandinavian Neo on the way out to Oslo it looks like Matt Cam's got a uh, bit of a pushback at the Helvetic E2 on the way out to Zurich as the A380 begins its taxi. <laughs> nice to see the E2s again. Did I read somewhere, Matt, did you share about Royal Jordanian and their potential new planes? Was that yourself who shared that? Um, yes, it was. It was me, mate. Yeah, I think, I do believe they've got a single E2 or maybe one or two E2s and stuff. Yep. And they said they may be using them on one or two Manchester routes if they're at a loose end for aircraft and stuff. So uh, every chance we might see one of the uh, Royal J Jordanian E2s as well. Oh, we'll take a bit of that. That would be wild. <laughs> I do believe they've only got one or two, if that, you know. I don't yeah. believe they've got a lot of uh, those airframes. Uh, yeah. Right now on the roll to Barcelona. Cheers, Plane and More Productions. Graham Eaton, hello, welcome to you. Hope you're doing well, mate. And Jane, hello, thanks for tuning in. Hello. Heinen, A330 on the move on Matt Cam as well. And yeah, I'm not sure if it's being pushed to a gate or... Um, I'm not sure if it's being pushed to a gate or it's uh, been loaded, to be honest, Martin. Sure. Okay. Keep an eye on that one. Yep. And uh, chat, who's uh, who saw my um, wildlife photography video that I put out the other day? Because um, it seems like um, kingfishers are like pigeons now. I'm seeing them all the time. <laughs> we uh, we went out the uh, the other day and uh, didn't expect to see one because people have said. Oh, yeah, there's, there's kingfishers here, you know, and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, we'd, we'd never seen it. We've been, like, 15 times, never seen one. And, uh... Little, little Wookiee. The Echo. And, uh, yeah, me and Jen just kind of, like, sat in the sun, and we were just kind of, like, waiting. 
uh, just to get a bit of video and stuff like that. And we thought, oh, while the sun's out, we were ready to go home. And while the sun's out, we'll just enjoy it and then go home. And then there's a guy over the other side of the pond, like, puts his binoculars up to his eyes dead quick. And we're, like, looking at him going, what's he looking at over there? And we're, like, looking, we're, like, zooming in and everything, trying to work out what he's looking at. And then next thing, his missus next to him, her phone rings. And she goes, oh, yeah, we're just watching this Kingfisher. And me and Jen look at each other like, what? Like, we're sat looking at the same thing, can't see this Kingfisher anywhere. It's like, Jen's looking as well. She goes, there it is. So zoom right in. And I think we got about a minute with it before it flew off. And I managed to grab some pictures and I managed to grab a little bit of video as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Second time I've seen one now. And uh, I've been, been wanting to see one for quite a while. And now we've had two at once. So That's mega. <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and Zed, uh, got you on on the background while I worked today. Uh, nice looking blue skies, it certainly is, mate. We'll uh, definitely take a bit of this. It's 8 on the taxi out as well. It's just nice for it not to be raining for a change. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that. Yesterday was pretty torrential, wasn't it? It's horrible, yeah. Have you ever been to Martinmere? Um, I've looked at it, but no, I've never been, Amy. I have looked at it a few times. Sounds like your thing, though. It's got your name written on it. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Helvetic E2. Don't see many of these in Manchester these days. Due to uh, KLM not really sending them at the moment to Manchester. And the Needy Jet also on the taxi out as well. Let's break away from that and have a quick look at the uh, Heinem, which has been brought around the corner now. This is the uh, power of having Matt Cam in the streams. We can see everything that's going on on the main apron at Manchester Airport. Hope you still enjoy Matt Cam in the chat. Hey, nice, Greg. Yeah, make sure you follow my uh, wildlife photography page then, mate, if you're into your wildlife. Give it a, uh, I'm going to give it a, a shameless plug. I'll uh, I'll pay Andy after the show. <laughs> I've put a few links to it in the Discord anyway. If you uh, if you want to check it out. Oh, I see a certain person strolling up. Is he going to make it through the the boggy <laughs> grassland? Joanna's still enjoying Matt Cam. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good, Matt Cam, isn't it? Just getting to see all this kind of thing. We were discussing it, weren't we? Because we were saying we send them to Southside sometime, but the problem is, like, you don't really see anything new at the moment on Sundays because the problem is they're on single runway ups for most of the show. Yeah. Well, all the show, to be fair. So to go Southside, all you'd see is the same action, but further away. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the... The car park roof is, is really, really good, though, because it adds more stuff. Even if they were on dual runway ups, you wouldn't see anything new. you just see the same action, but a different angle. Whereas now it's, like, new action. I remember last year we, we had uh, we, we dabbled with some midweek shows, didn't we, Matt, where, where you were south side and we were at the RBP. But obviously now with your own show uh, on the Friday, I think it, it'd just be too much, wouldn't it, like... The three shows of my cam uh, per week when yeah, obviously you're, sure, um, you're working a job as well. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'd be a bit too pleased if I took three <laughs> days out as well. Yeah, that'd be a bit that's, too that's very true. Maybe one day in the future. Maybe. Turkish Airlines, A321 Neo. Nice pair of walkies on board. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined again hey. by a uh, very special guest. Mm -hmm. My mum thinks I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, mate? All right, good. How are you doing? Everyone all right? Good. You're uh, out flying late in a bit, aren't oh, you? I am. I'm off to Malaga. Malaga, nice. Agrapunta, as some people call it. Ah. That's uh, 
you may or may not know, it's probably one of my favourite sim destinations to fly in Malaga. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you like it today, it's going to be a bit windy. Are you uh, going over the mountains today or coming in back over the sea, do you think? Yes, uh, we're going over the mountains today. Nice. Oh, it's quite steep after you get over them mountains, isn't it? You really have to get over them and then give it a bit of a, yeah, bit of a dive the, down. You've got the, it depends what runway they're on. Um, it's been a while since I've been there, let's have a quick look. Um, make sure we don't have to show you that one. Um, one, three, right. So we've got, uh, let's do the, uh, let's do this. So yeah, so if you're on one, two, you come in from a place, well, I used to, oh, it's all changed. It's coming from a VOR called Martin up on the hills. Yeah. And then you come That's down. That's not the reason why I like flying in there, by the way. <laughs> 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 flying over Martin, Mia. There's a, yeah, you're coming at 5,000 and down to 42 there. But yeah, you've got this step bit over the hills. And yeah. I mean, I've had it twice now where they've picked me off, given air traffic, given me a head and steered me towards this high ground down to the uh, southwest and then forgot about me. Squeaky bum time. Alvatic E2 spooling up there. Giving it a nice wookie howl. He was quick enough for that screenshot, eh? <laughs> <laughs> E2 on the roll. Oh, it, well, one of them's came in yesterday. Um, I can't remember which one, it might be a Helvetic or whatever, but uh, it was Wookiee as it was coming into land. Oh, wow. It was really ah. weird. It's like the auto thrust had come off. Yeah, I think it was one of them. Yeah. And I was in the car park, and it went past. I hear this Wookiee howl, and I look up, and this thing's going past. It, it, it's Because it was quite blustery yesterday. Mm. Uh, it was quite rough coming in here last night. John saying he's off to Malaga in two weeks on Friday. Right. Don't forget me post to go. I think what happens is when these things idle and then reintroduce thrust, that's where uh, you'll hear the Wookiee right. howl. And I assume on final approach, you might idle it and then obviously. Yeah, you know, because you've got the gear and the flat pack, you normally got a steady power setting. So unless there was like a gust and it came off and then, you know, had a bit too much energy and then went back up again, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I've never heard it coming into land before. 318 next to go. We'll make sure we whack the audio up for this one for you folks. Really busy in the chat today as well. Yeah, it is. How we're looking on viewers today, folks? Over 2,000 on YouTube already. Nice. Welcome in, everybody. Make sure you share the stream around. If you uh, if you are watching, give it a share on Twitter. Maybe invite your friends and family in. We're trying to create a really sort of friendly community here on the channel. And we'd love to welcome as many people into that as possible. Emirate 380 just waiting for takeoff clearance at the moment. Currently sat on the runway. Oh, Mike's saying I might know his nephew Liam. I might do. Where's he based? Is he based at Manchester? If he is, then I might do. Oh, I hear engines. There we go. Really gusty that. Big gusts of wind. Unfazing the um, A380 though. Mega departure that. Yeah. As right. Tracy Carlin returns for two years of Airliners Live membership. Cheers, Tracy. Thank you very much. Enjoy that gold tail badge. Thank you very much. If you are enjoying the show today, guys, the best way to support the channel is by uh, gifting memberships. And you can do that by clicking the dollar symbol, then clicking gifted memberships. Fair bit of crabbing on this next arrival. Looks like a wide body.
Jasmine. Jane, thank you very much for gifting a membership to the community. Really appreciate that, Jane. Thanks, Jane. Hope you're well. Wind at the moment is uh, the same 300 at 16. So it's coming over the terminal mm. and it's not very nice. And also the wind meter will be blocked slightly by the terminal. So it'll be more than that. You can tell by the crab on that uh, 330 that it is, it is um, a bit stronger than 16 knots, without a doubt. Mm. Nice to see this. We've uh, not seen the 330 Neo in a while. Nice. Q8, beautiful aircraft, this one. Oh, that was a bit firm. Yeah. It's got the, uh, the upwind wing up. One of my landings, I know, Jay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, recently I cannot land for toffee in the sim. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm messing something up. It's uh, it's all going Pete Tong in the last 10 or 15 feet. Well, I think I need to uh, get a bit of practice. But uh, it's really nice to see that 330. Probably one of my uh, favourite new additions to the airport. Really nice, isn't it? Very, very efficient, so I'm told, by uh, certain people I know who used to work yeah. for Airbus. More so than the 350, which I think they're trying to keep quiet. Yeah, I know. I've heard that as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to hear that, Debbie, but I, uh, I'm sure you'll get it sorted very soon. And as we say, I'm sure something good will come of it as well. It gives you a chance for a fresh start or to step back and reevaluate things as well. I'm sure there'll be some positives in there for you, Debbie. And uh, first of which, at least... Take a week or two for yourself, relax, enjoy it as a uh, just a bit of a break. And I think the worst thing you can do, especially if um, if you can afford not to, is is just to immediately rush into the same thing again. You know, just take a week or so just to relax. MP's uh, asking, uh, he said that his friend's got an engineer for two, he said there's a Dreamliner 10, do we get the Manchester? Uh, yeah, I think the Saudi is a 10, um, Etihad, Etihad bring them, yeah. a 10 in, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Two we have got them, but we don't see them here very often, do we? I no. Do they ever see them at Manchester? Yeah. yeah. See them go over quite a lot, see the United ones uh, from Europe over to the States go over the top quite a lot. The huge difference between that and the uh, the Dash Eight Dreamliner. Yeah, stumpy little things. Yeah, but yeah, I do. Um, just going back to what I was saying, I do appreciate. Obviously, that's easier said than done if you've got bills and stuff to pay as well. But uh, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll find something very very soon. It's kind of similar to what happened to us, really, wasn't it? Like both of us uh, had a complete reshuffle over the pandemic with. Our work, I know your work changed a lot, didn't it? And yeah. um, obviously, I changed jobs, and yeah, that also allowed us to reevaluate, you know, things and put more time into the channel, and then it actually allowed it to grow. And now oh, it's a full-time job for both of us. That's worse jobs, isn't it? Certainly is. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Deborah, hello, welcome to you. Saying I have eight friends departing on the Aer Lingus to uh, Barbados. Saying Deborah. Well, we'll make sure we capture that for you, no problem. Eight friends, that's a lot, isn't it? It is. I don't think I've got eight friends in total. It's <laughs> about 50 more than Fezza. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry, thank you very much, mate. Gifting an Airliners Live membership to the community, putting us on uh, five brand new VIPs on today's show. Thank you very much for your support. And Patrick's saying he's got a friend coming in from Fun Chal on Ryanair, number three in the queue to land. Can you show the landing, please? Nice. Excellent. Be more precarious landing here today than Funchal. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I got in last night, it was three one zero eighteen gusting twenty eight. Nice. I uh, hear. Uh, sorry. Yeah, in here yeah. last night uh, it was about it was about eleven o'clock, quite past eleven. I think we came in at. But uh, thank God it was a really nice landing. But it was it was rough as a badger's backside. It wasn't very nice. And uh, the the thing is, what you saw with that Kuwait three thirty is that obviously the winds coming from over the terminal and the right hand wing was lifted up by the wind 
Yeah. Now, when you do a crosswind land on a bow, once you kick it straight, you put aileron into wind. You turn the ailerons into wind to stop the wind from lifting that wing up. And Airbus say you don't need to do that, and I always do. Mm. I always do. I always put a little bit of wing down yeah. because it stops you getting blown off the centre line. Um, but really, you want that wing down because the wind's just going to lift it. You've got more lift over that wing than you have over the other one. Yeah. And that's what we saw there as it came in. The wind picked that wing up. So, uh, yeah, when it's coming from that direction, it's not much fun at all. Check uh, your zoomed in camera, Andy, because I lost connection on that pan then. Oh, yeah, I'll be away. Uh, Robot saying, can you show us the Virgin Atlantic landing? Uh, my auntie is on there. Yeah, I'm sure we won't be missing an A330, mate. How's it looking on the apron today, Matt? Um, looking okay, mate. Yeah, not too bad. Pretty busy. Nice. Um, she worked off being turned around and whatnot, being reloaded. And uh, yeah, she'll be pretty busy. In a, uh, next oh. half an hour or so, she'll get things moving up here. Sweet. Awesome. Didn't realise you had the legend Matt Cam on uh, on the go today. He is. Yeah. Hello, mate. All right. Back on the Super Sunday shows. How we were, do, mate? <laughs> right. We were discussing about like having him over on South Side, but obviously on Sundays they they they're only on single runway uh, usage for our shows. I know they open up the second runway later in the afternoon, but uh, the apron cam is really good. People love it. Yeah, I enjoy it. Must admit. So I guess Mark, you're you're used to turbulence. You're used to the plane bouncing around is that yeah i mean it was bad last night over the alps um right. we went out over the alps and the worst turbulence i've had in a long time was when you got strong northerly over the pyrenees strong yeah. northerly breeze and the any sort of big hills mountains whatever they act like a ski ramp and they just chuck the air up and you get this big wave and last night over the alps we had it, it was about 120 knots sort of from the in the direction we were going and coming and on the way out well, there was a bit of a wave, and the, the aircraft wasn't holding the speed very well. Luckily, we were going a bit lower because we wanted to stay in the, in the tailwind. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't nice. And then on the way back, we hit some moderate turbulence, and it really shook. And normally, you get light chop, occasionally moderate. You're getting, you know, bounced around, and suddenly you get a good shake. But this was smooth, and then a really big shake, and then smooth, a really big shake. Just stuffed the belts on straight away and mm. came back on the speed. And just had to sit there. But you could see the vertical speed going up and down and up and down as you're in this wave as this air is going over the mountains and it really wasn't very nice it was quite boring <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you were already uh, sort of at your max level and I guess you couldn't climb higher or was it just not no, worth it? No, we were actually low um, you don't want to be at your max level in, in turbulence because the speed's going up and down and you, you end up, the higher you go depending on your weight, you end up in what's called coughing corner. If you go faster, then you overspeed. If you go slower, then you end up sort of getting towards the stall. So what you want is you want a big margin on the speed. Luckily, because we were down, thank God, about three, I think it was three, four, zero going northbound. We, we, were, we had a big margin. Yeah. So when the speed started doing its silly games of going up and down, up and down, we had the room there where we weren't sitting there like staring at it going, oh, you know, this is really, you know, not very nice. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if you, if you were up at height and you had a small margin, you were quite heavy, then, yeah, it could have got quite interesting. It's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> right now, next to land in from... Uh, where is it in from? Uh, from Brussels. Flew there in the sim last night. Very nice. 737-800. Henna's asking, have we got a new edge of vocational vid coming soon? Yes, we have. I've been writing it over the last few days. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Andy came up with the idea last week. I thought, oh, this is good. And it's going to be talking about pilot error and mm. how we've got process in place to stop this. And it's quite a big subject. Mm. It's, um, it's, it involves crew resource management, um, the, the processes we've got to help not have errors. We, we call it avoid, trap, mitigate. We've got things about getting maxed out, whether you're, you know, you're in the green, you're in the amber, you're in the red. Communications, we've got air traffic checklists, that's the standard operating procedures. Uh, there's quite a lot in the crew resource management side of it I've been uh, writing up over the last few days. It's going to be a big one, and it's a really, really interesting one as well. Because the, the, the inspiration came from, obviously, your most popular Pilot Explains video, the uh, Fears of Flying video. Someone commented on it saying, my, my biggest fear of flying is human error. Yeah. Now, you know what? Back when I was like new at you know, being a passenger on a plane, that was always my biggest fear was always like, 
is the pilot competent? You know, is there a chance they're going to do something wrong that could become a serious issue? But then you think every sort of way something could go wrong by human error, there's always like a safeguard, isn't it? It's never like you can just press a button and the plane's just going to fall out of the sky. There's always like extra steps that you would have to consciously think about each step and, you know, the plane would tell you you're doing these things as well and it'd be, you know, extremely, extremely hard to cause a serious problem by that's, human error, right? That's like one of the things where you... When we went through that period um, when aviation was just starting to get sort of really commercial and everything... Yeah. Um, and they were just saying, oh, yeah, we've we've learned a lot from this accident and we've learned this and we've learned that. A lot of the stuff they are learning, isn't it, is is how to make sure that doesn't happen again and when and what what can they put in place to stop that happening again as well yeah and that's what you know we, we look at this has come over years of accidents and everything we, you know we're going to talk about flight deck design and um the di the differences between a, a 1960s flight deck like the 737 compared to the airbus one well, it's 1980s but it's they've learned so much over the years even you know like the difference in the knobs and the switches the landing gear lever has a wheel on it so it feels like a wheel and the flap levers shaped like a wing, and they all feel different. And, um, you know, we have standard operating procedures done by the manufacturer saying this is how we want you to operate our aircraft. So that if I get in a plane in Manchester and I fly with the first officer there, if I go down to Gatwick and I fly with the first officer there, they're all doing exactly the same thing. If I go to Milan and fly with the first officer there, they're all flying the aircraft exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, we'll be looking into flight deck design and how that's, you know, come, come along over the years. And a lot of it, unfortunately, has come from accidents um, to stop them from happening again. And what we do now in the training department, we have a thing called evidence-based training. To be continued. Wow, that Virgin A330 showing us how it's done. Yeah, kicking up a nice bit of spray on the runway as well. Yeah, buttery smooth landing. A little bit long on the landing, but we like that because it means you can see the uh, the wheels contacting the ground. That's it. In the way in from Bridgetown, completing a 7-hour, 54-minute flight. So what you say, Mark, evidence-based training. Yeah, so what they're doing now, it used to be every six months you do engine failure after takeoff, single-engine approach to go around, single-engine approach to landing. That's not the big problem these days. The engines are so reliable, it's not... It's not a, it doesn't happen very often, it, you know, very, very rarely. So what they do is they look at what's killing people, effectively, what's causing accidents, and train us not to do it. And then they give us other scenarios to look at. And it's all graded, it all goes on a spreadsheet. And then they look at, you know, the last six months' sims, and they say, well, all right, we did this really well, but this one, there was a few people seemed to struggle a little bit with it. So in the next schedule, in the next six months, we'll have that as a training item, so that everyone knows exactly how to deal with this thing and every six months they'll sit there and look at all the data because it's a data driven airline and a lot of the airlines are now they look at the data and they find out where the problems are and they train us not to do it and it's a much much better way of doing it. the simulator you know is a, is a great tool but for years it's been dreaded by pilots because you're going in if you've got a you know a bad examiner or a chopper as we call them who's there to make your life difficult or try and fail you or you have to prove something you don't learn anything and everyone's scared of going in because it's all checking. Now it's becoming more training. Let's train you not to do these stupid things. And it is good. I mean, my airline has come up with a, their own way of doing a certain thing that's the, the biggest risk at the moment in aviation. They've come up with this really good, easy way of, of getting yourself out of a, out of a tight situation. And it's it really cleverly thought out. Mm. A bit wobbly as well. You can tell the... Uh, you can always tell when the wind's coming over the terminal here at Manchester. Mm. It's, uh, it makes things a little bit more bumpy on the way in. I assume that like, completely shakes up the uh, the wind direction and things when uh, they encounter that mechanical turbulence. You know, they might have it stronger under control, and then it's almost like a curveball when they get there on final approach. Yeah, it's, I mean, up at height, you know, it'll be choppy. Yeah. But then when you get down to the sort of last uh, couple hundred feet, really, that's where it's really going to get choppy because it's been churned up by by the terminal. So it's low level, low level um, uh, turbulence off, off of the terminal. Kind of mechanical turbulence, it's called. 
so it comes off. You get it off hills and everything. You used to get it on Gatwick on a southerly, on a southerly breeze. There used to be a hanger by the right down by the touchdown point. It used to be the Laker hanger. They used to call it Freddy's Revenge. And uh, you had a strong southerly. It was it was pretty unpleasant. <laughs> right now, just vacating in front of the uh, Verge Atlantic A330. This arriving in from Funchal. And uh, Matt Cam's got a uh, nice shot of a uh, Jet 2757. Yes. Over on the apron, looking good. Jordan's asking, uh, see Ryanair come off the high-speed X6. Does laying on heavy reverse put more stress on the engine? They need servicing more as a result. Yes. Uh, most times you'll use what's called idle reverse. So you'll bring the engines back to idle, and then you'll pull the reverser levers or the, 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 the toggles, whatever switches you've got, and the reverser doors will open. The engine will go into reverse idle. So it's, 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 it's a mild reverse. It doesn't really strain the engine that much. But if you use full reverse, then that's classed as one cycle and an engine. So say I, you know, I fly that engine from here to Hagada. Using full reverse will effectively put the same, you know, they class it as doing the same amount of, of wear on an engine as just flying from here to Hagada. It's, it's quite stressful. I like right. to use um, the last couple of times I've been in here, I've, I've used full reverse to make the turn off because there was someone behind me. And because uh, it was windy, I was using flat three, so we were coming in quite fast with about 148 knots. And even with auto brake medium, and uh, you know, I needed full reverse. With auto brake, uh, with, sorry, with idle reverse, it doesn't actually decrease your stopping distance, it reduces the wear on the brakes. But when you use full reverse, that does reduce your shop stopping distance dramatically. As that easy jet departs out, quite interesting to see the uh, great A330 still holding in front of the hangars there. So I must be waiting for a uh, a space to come in. So with with engine wear, sort of the, the theme here, we we often see uh, Jet 2 use a lot of runway, you know, on the 737s yeah. in particular. Um, and I've, I've heard that's down to you know reducing the wear on the engines, but. I guess the question would be, um, why why don't all planes do that? Why don't all planes use loads of runway on the departure and not much takeoff thrust? Well, Jet 2 buy their own engines, I'm told. So yeah. they want to get as much you know use out of them. So their their performance is set so that they reduce the wear. Now, a lot of airlines, they will um, lease the engines. Yep. And it will be power by the hour or, or various different ways of doing it. Um, so they don't really... They don't really care how much they wear the engines because they don't own them. And, you know, if they have to replace them a bit early, it's not their cost who has to do it. Um, there's pros and cons to it. Yeah, okay, you know, the Jet 2 are using a lot more runway. They're reducing the, the engine power on takeoff, making the engines last longer. But sometimes you can't do that. If you're at Jersey or the Isle of Man, you've got to use a lot of power because it's a short runway. Yeah. Um, at Malaga today, we'll be using a thing called improved climb because we're taking off towards the hill. So what we'll do, we'll stay on the runway longer get a higher speed and then it gives us a better climb rate once we get off the ground ah. so instead of taking off at 130 140 knots we may be taking off at like 160 and uh, the computer will work it all out we used to use charts and um, work out how much engine thrust to use that Logan air getting uh, shifted around a bit on the approach <laughs> there in from the Isle of Man as Scott returns for 26 months the Valiners Live Support saying great to have Captain Mark on the show. I always learn something from him. Such a dedicated and knowledgeable chap. Oh, That's from uh, yeah. Scott. Thank you very much, Scott, for your support of the channel. And also a big thank you to uh, Blue Sky 75 for using the Twitch Prime sub on the channel. If you are watching on Twitch, don't forget to check them primes, guys. You may have a free sub to the channel available. But uh, next out for us here to Fiat Ventura, the A321 Neo. Sun F, no one roll. I've heard uh, G Sun G is uh, is in Manchester now as well. Oh. Not sure if she's been doing commercial flights yet. Not sure I've seen her yet. Good question here from Brian Clarkson. He's asked, um, if both engines fail, could you land with the APU? 
Well, you, you, it would be a good idea to get it on because it will give you electrics um, and uh, air conditioning and, and air to try and restart the engines. It doesn't give you any thrust. No. Um, so if both engines fail, you become a 60-ton glider. And it will glide a long way. Yeah, you know, we do this in the simulator. We've got, since uh, the Hudson incident, Airbus have come out with a new checklist. So we've got en all engine fails at height and all engine fails at low level. Different things you need to do. But it will glide a long way. And it, when you think that uh, when you start a descent in a jet airliner, say you're, uh, you're 30,000 feet, you're going to be 100 miles away from the airport. The engines effectively, they, they come back to a form of idle. And you're effectively gliding in with, you know, the engines are idling. And that's what you want for the best efficiency. You want to get up there as quick as possible, stay up there as long as possible, and then glide in. So the engines will come back to idle. Um, obviously, if they both failed, you'll get more drag and, you know, you won't glide as far. It's, um, but it will glide a long way. But the APU, yeah, it, it doesn't give you any thrust, so it won't help you in that situation. But it will, like I said, it will give you air, so you might be able to, um, you might be able to get one of the engines going again. You can do it. There's a thing called a wind, windmill start, and on the Airbus, you need to get up to a fairly high speed to get the engines being turned by the airflow, and then you can reintroduce the fuel and uh, and hopefully get them going again. But I mean, I've, I, you know, I've never seen a single engine failure, let alone a dual wind. So they're so reliable now. It just it very, very, very rarely happens. Do you think the newer engines are more reliable? I mean, there's no. Oh yeah. It, it's it's so it's so rare anyway, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a very good friend of mine who used to fly Tristars for the RAF and for Caledonia. And he, he'd had five engine failures. It was always a number one engine. Oh right. Um, on different aircraft, and oh. you know, now there's people they go the entire career and they never have one. It just it is so reliable, and this this again this is the progression, and you know we can talk about this in in the new video that it's the progression of technology is moving along yep. to make this as safe as it possibly can be. That's bad because you got oh I'll let you read that out. Sonny, thank you very much for the 29 months uh, using your Twitch Prime on the channel. Really appreciate that, and uh, just pushing back on Matt Cam Smith. <laughs> Out to Bridgetown is the uh, 787 Dreamliner from Tui. We also have a beautiful Scandinavian uh, CRJ on the taxi out as well. Wow. And uh, Laurie going in with the 10 airliners live gifted membership supporting the stream today thank you so much Laurie. you didn't have to do that thank you thank you very very Appreciate much that. putting um, us on uh, what are we on uh 15 brand new members on today's show thank you very much Laurie. kick starting the stream there if you are enjoying the show guys uh please support the channel with a gifted membership it does help cover the costs of our streams and uh, it allows us to Really put on a good show for you guys week after week with all of these extras like Mac Cam and Multicam and things like that. We really do appreciate all of your support. Jill's asking, where have I flown to most other than Manchester, of course? Probably Newcastle because I was based there for 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> where were you based before that with your old airline? I was at Gatwick. Gatwick, okay. Yeah, and then I was a flying instructor for Denham before, at Denham before that at the pilot centre. Okay. That was good. Amy Staff and I was asking, what's the worst turbulence you've ever encountered? Where was it? Um, uh, possibly Storm Dudley. I um, said before, that hurt my back. As we came around to the ILS at about 3,500 feet, we had gusts and it, something in my back pulled with the, with the, 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 the violent you know, shake of it. Um, like I said, over the Pyrenees with a strong northern, they had a couple of good ones there. Um, and then I remember one night going into one of the Turkish airports on the 7.5. I'd only been out and signed off on the aircraft for a couple of days. And I was going in with a, a fantastic Greek captain called uh, Rico Nikolaidis, who's unfortunately no longer with us. And there were thunderstorms everywhere. It was absolutely horrendous. And we're coming into land. And we had to get, go through this, 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 uh, this cell of weather. As we're coming into land, it was about, I don't know, maybe about eight miles and we had the gear down and 20, stay, 20 degrees of flap. And the aircraft was going up. Should have been going down at 700 feet a minute. But the updraft of this storm was so, well, this cell was so violent. It wow. was lifting the aircraft. And, you know, he just greased it on. It was amazing. I was just sitting there watching this. Like, <laughs> Wow. We uh, might be getting a 7.5 in the sim. Oh. Soon. I'm, I'm not Ooh. sure if it's, it's too close yet. But there is one being made. That's going to be really good. Yeah, really looking forward to that. 
And a uh, huge thank you as well to Mike Richards, gifting an airliner's live membership. That's gone to Mr. Plod. Thank you very much, Mike. Cheers for supporting the channel today. A nice pair of walkies touching down on 2-3 right, Air France, A220. Ooh. Mike's asking, do I go fly to Corfu much? I have done over the last few years. I don't like the place very much. <laughs> It's all right if you're going in on the northerly, but if you're coming in on the other one, you've got to do the circle. I did it in the sim with Fezzer, and luckily he never touched any switches on that one, so it all worked out all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no uh, dual hydraulic failures on a no. final approach. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Diane. We've got to get the boss on the stream every now and again. <laughs> he insisted. Pay rise all round. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's got deep pockets. Let's have a listen to this. Air France A220 vacating 23 right. Gorgeous uh, Pratt Whitney engines on this. An English golfer. 21 months morning all. Nice to see a live show again. Welcome back, mate. Windows are so big on the A220. It's great, isn't it? Mark, can you just jack it in and get a job on one of them for us? And then every time you come past the RVP, just give it a. No. We never seem to get a walkie past the RVP these days. Well, maybe, you know, one just... day I'll end up working for Air Baltic and I'll be able to do that <laughs> for you, you know. Yeah. That would be nice. The problem is, they've just, they just got. They like the IAEs. On idle, they just roll. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just no reason to add any thrust in on them. Yeah. John Gilbert, thank you, mate. Gifting an airliner's live membership to the community. That'll really help the channel. Thank you very much, John. And uh, Ryan Air next to land in from Belfast as Matt catches a uh, aircraft pushing back. The Finnair Embraer. Switch over to that in a second and give you a quick look. There it is. Looking beautiful. Just completed the pushback. It's the magic plane. It is. Yep. Uh, Gary's asking if I'm flying today. I am Gary. I'm off to Malaga a bit later on. All the waivers will go past. I wonder if you used that joke on a Wednesday show when we had that really low cloud ceiling and planes were just disappearing when they took off. And I'm sure there was a thin air that, uh, that did the same. That was low, wasn't it? And, uh... Uh, Malcolm's asking, how do pilots stay awake on long-haul flights? Um, we covered this in the Pilot Explains video. Um, the, they've got rest area, crew rest area, and normally you'll have, if it's a long, long one, you'll have extra crew to take over while you're going to have a snooze. And uh, there's a mate of mine, he, he, he used to do a lot of long-haul, he was moaning about it, you know, like said, it's like lying in a coffin, just getting bumped around trying to sleep. But uh, Last night when we were getting, uh, you know, it was night time, we're flying along, and it did make me think, you know, the amount of times people say, oh, well, yeah, it must be great flying a plane. You know, what's it like? I said, well, I'll tell you what, you sit in the cupboard under your stairs with a hoover on for 10 hours, <laughs> get your mum to bring you a couple once an hour, and that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Clammer, welcome back for nine months of membership, saying great to see the live streams again. Off for two weeks, saying Miss Clammer. Great to have you back with us. Thank you for tuning in and taxiing out. We've seen the uh, Tui Dreamliner on the way out to Bridgetown. We saw this getting pushed back a moment or so before. I remember Concord Julie saying on some flights they'll just have like a partition off, you know, some seats yeah. in the cabin, you know, for for cabin crew and stuff to have a little break, maybe a little snooze. And what's going on here then? So we've still got the Virgin Atlantic holding down there, which arrived in uh, probably about 10 minutes ago now. And uh, the Kuwait A330 Neo it's has uh, moved up a little bit, but yeah, it's still yeah. holding down at the... Uh, down at the end, it's not the air fans behind it, so I suspect that uh, after this uh, Tui aircraft goes, maybe they'll shift the Q8 up a bit further, but a uh, bit of a queue for down there. A couple of gates been made clear now over at T2, so should be all right now. There we go. We'll keep an eye on it. 
the uh, March Queen, um, Johanna's asking if there's a difference in the tech in the cockpit between the Neos and the CEO. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, there's not. Uh, the newer ones have got the new radio kit, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, we've got different weather radars, but they, they appeared on the later CEOs. And, uh, yeah, that, that's it, really. Uh, we were hoping when they announced the Neo we'd be getting 350 or 380 flight decks, but uh, that's... Still in the pipeline, so I'm told. That'd be very nice. Yes, all you needed. There we go. 330's moving now, and it looks like the Kuwait 330's moving as well. Jet 275 lined up on the runway next to go as well. One of the things I love about these new Airbuses will sometimes love the cameras, you know, on the tail and under yeah. the gear and stuff, and you can see them. I mean, even, even the passengers can even, like, tune into them on their TVs. Well, years ago, one airline put cameras in the flight deck, and you know, on, on stormy days, you know, you you can see the pilots working and swearing, and then they took the cameras <laughs> out. You know, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't know in what universe that would be a good idea. No, I know it's, it's what that's what you get when people run airlines. Unfortunately, yeah. it's very rarely it's pilots. They could have like a fake loop video, couldn't they? Of like yeah. <laughs> some very professional, very static pilots. But what you should do is just put a video on with no pilots in there. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. April Fool's Day. Well, I used to do that it. years ago when we had the old video players. I'd set a video camera up in the um, in the toilet, pointing down at the or in front of the toilet, and videoed like ten minutes of just nothing there. And then when people would come around the house, they'd go to the loo, and then I'd put this video on. They'd come back. We went, oh, we've got a camera in the toilet. We've been watching you. And they're like, what? <laughs> um, Joanna, was that a mistake? Joanna. I'm gonna press the button, but if you if you meant to do five. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fifty <laughs> gifted <laughs> memberships. <Yeah>. Joanna. <laughs> Wow. You don't get nuts. many of them, chat. Wow. You don't get many of them, chat. Please I thought you'd... let me know, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> that I you... is incredible. I thought you meant that she write like a message, she, like a rude message she wasn't meant to. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> 50 gifted memberships coming in. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Joanna. That will, that will cover the cost of the new screen, the touch screen. Just yeah, that, right. that sorts us out. Joanna, thank you so so much for that. Thank what you. an incredible amount of support. So get some love in the chat, ladies and gents, for Joanna, a huge community member, dropping fifty gifted memberships to the channel. That's crazy. And but, Daniel uh, also supporting the channel today with an incredible gifted membership. Thank you so so much for that. And Sam gifting five memberships to the community. Wow, absolutely incredible. Right. What can we say? Yeah, I need to focus here. Just as Joanna does that, got Virgin Atlantic arrival. I know she, she loves the sail. 7 4 overhead, Matt, if you can grab that, pal. Oh, yeah, I can see that, you know. Oh, Can't you've got it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Joanna. I'll, uh, I'll get an up to date figure when uh, YouTube catches up. That Let's puts us on 75 brand new VIPs on today's show. 75. Thanks, Joanna. That's very kind. Wow. I know you do a lot for the channel, and it's always good to see you at the task fairs as well. I know you've been to, I think, every one, I think. Maybe. Modelling the merch, obviously. Yeah. Merch queen, merch queen yeah. yeah. <laughs> as the CEO says. Yeah, thank Beautiful you. Beautiful shot of that Andy there, just grabbing that for us, zoomed right in. And Rasta Rob, thank you very much for gifting an Airliners Live membership. Really appreciate you, mate. Thanks for tuning in today. A short trail on that as well, but you can see it's a quad jet. You can see the four different trails right at the start there and then dissipates from there. But nice to have a bit of blue sky for a change. It's Spring, lovely, isn't it? Spring might be here. Oh, I like and, the summer. Uh, the rain gets warmer. I was just <laughs> scrolling through just to try and find, uh, make sure Joanna was, <laughs> yeah. Mentally, I said, "Happy bonus day, guys! Thank you for helping through the past year with uh, my mental health. I love you guys. Thank oh. you very much, Johnny. You really didn't have to do that. That's an incredible amount of support coming into the channel. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. It'll go a long way, as we've said. And uh, Gary, just saying, what's a VIP membership or a membership? So, Gary, that's where people pay once a month um, to support the channel with as little as one ninety nine a month." 
uh, and it goes right up to our executive club members. So basically, it's just people paying a monthly fee, uh, which goes towards the cost of the channel, basically, mate, because uh, what we do here on Airliners Live is, uh, unlike some of our competitors, we give everything for free to our audience we the chat is free our abroad shows are free our live streams are free you don't have to be a member to talk in the chat it's so we do rely on our members support and uh, by signing up to be a vip that's how you're supporting us and uh, it really really does help it keeps us going it keeps us making these shows and it allows us to keep improving these shows as well so um yeah, it's very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. We're always thinking of ways to like give back to you guys, say thank you. Not only just that, but also give you a little bit of extra content for you folks. So if you have just become a VIP, maybe you've just been gifted one or you've signed up, uh, head on over to our YouTube channel and scroll on over to the membership tab. You've just unlocked a bunch of like behind-the-scenes videos, uh, office videos, you know, photo editing, video editing, just loads of behind-the-scenes. I mean, to be fair, we're doing one a week these days, and Martin's... Uh, making a big effort to get a lot of new VIP only videos up there for you folks. Yeah. And again, it's it's not really even even aviation stuff, it's all just behind the scenes stuff, us working, us showing off our day to day life, tips and tricks that we've learned along the way of video editing, um, etc etc. And Beastie Loose fan returning for twenty three months of business class membership. Another great stream by far the best aviation channel. Thank you, Beastie. It's great to see you as well. Yeah, appreciate it, Beastie. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Chris. Really appreciate that as well. And Pilot Triss how are you doing, mate? Hope hey. you're doing well with the Premium Economy membership. It's great to see you in the channel, mate. Hope you are. Uh, Stephen saying, have I ever had a lightning strike? He got one going into the core few years ago. Um, no, I've not. Um, we did cover this again in the Pilots Explains video about uh, the fear of flying one. And most aircraft get it once a year and it's a non-event. Yep. Um, but luckily I've... I've managed to dodge it so far. Because <laughs> I don't go near thunderstorms. I do remember once, I think it was... Because... Uh, so, with lightning strikes, like you said, mostly non-events, but I think sometimes it can cause something to go tech. Again, not a big issue, but maybe, like, as a precautionary term, they could fly back to the airport. I do remember a uh, Urini, uh, when I think they've still got the Embraer E190. Um, that took off from, um, from Guernsey, and, and it, um, it had a, uh, a, a, a lightning strike hit it. It was during one of the storms as well. And as a precaution, it came back to the airport, and again, nothing, nothing bad happened to it. But it, that, that's kind of the most drastic I've ever seen when it comes to yeah it's effects it, on the plane. Normally, you know, sometimes you don't notice. So, you know, occasionally you get to an aircraft and you do the walk around. You know, there's a little burn hole here, and then you get the engineers. Oh, yeah, it's had a lightning strike. We'll have to find the exit, and you know, they'll, they'll find it, check it all out. But um, nice. Amy's asking about the mad static you see at night. Yeah, it's St Elmo's fire. Um, I've got. A few videos and pictures yeah, of that. That's really cool. To I'll see have that. to uh, I'll put it up on what? the VRK uh, chat. Pilot Triss as well, just saying I'm a new member. Always great to see the stream and everyone here. Not as active as usual, mm. uh, but it's still good to be here. It's great to see you as well, mate. I hope you're enjoying uh, your flying as well. And uh, let us know what you've been up to, or let us know as much as you can uh, what you've been up to anyway. And, uh, yeah, uh, we were not expecting that either, <laughs> Susie. Um, but I'm going to nip for a quick sprinkle. So I think, chat, I think we should let Captain Mark have a go on the buttons. Well, I, 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 I thought you were going to say on the camera so, then. Yeah, as you can see, Mark, yeah. this is a preview. Right. right. Every camera's got a number. Yep. And then numbers match these numbers. All right. So whatever you want to... Whatever's on this big screen here this is what everyone can out, see yeah. at home. So okay. have a play. All right, I will do it. See what, see what you're right. fancying. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be assuming that, you That screen there is the bank account, so if you want to buy anything... Yeah, yeah, this one here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just shot up a bit after... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right, let's get on eBay. We'll get on that one, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll tell you what we're on. Oh. Uh, Got a uh, Max coming in next anyway, looks like. Oh, it's a natural. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that. Um, Ollie's saying there's just a, uh, it could be a full stream of Q&A with question marks, so many questions I could ask. Um, we are talking about doing something like that, a VIP um, only thing, because obviously you, you VIP guys are very important. So what we might be doing in the future, hopefully, is um, when I've got a bit of time sitting in the sim building and you guys messaging me your questions and I'll sit there and answer whatever I can. That's great, yeah. And that yeah, would be, yeah. uh, you know, a little bit extra for you guys. Um, oh, I've lost the message now. Someone was saying that the, I, they got a good wave off me last week. I'm like, yep, of course. Hey. You know? <laughs> you want the wave, do you, to the oh, All the time, all yeah. the time, yeah. Especially on the mound, on the south side, always waving. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, because... 
you know, we, as, as pilots, we, we love it. We love we love seeing you guys watching. We love the you know the interest you take in in this job that we do. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's 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 quite humbling that so many people are so interested in it. I know a couple of um, people out. I know. I know you. You're probably aware of uh, their spotters themselves. They get photos, but also their um, pilots as well. They might even fly from Manchester. So on the days off, oh, they might come there. Oh, Airbus Red and that. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. He's a good yeah. lad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alex is asking. He's asking about the white trails coming out back in the engine. Yeah, the vapor trails. Um, there's a um, there's a, a chart called a Mintra point, a minimum trail point and it's to do with temperature and I, I can't remember now I mean, it's pressure I think is another possibly yeah, yeah. yeah I mean it's it's 30 years since I've had to look at that chart yeah. so uh, but yeah they have this chart and it's it, it, it depends on certain times of day some days you'll get a fantastic trails and mm. some days you won't see a thing you know then sometimes you just don't get any trails at all but uh, yeah it's it's not chem trails we have got loads of uh, Photoshop pictures of, of buttons that say chemtrails. It's not. <laughs> I've seen them, yeah. And the magic plane's about to take off. Ah. 100 people oh. disappearing into thin air. <laughs> but first of all, oh, right, okay. two in Dreamliner. <laughs> that really appeared out of uh, thin air. Oh, Susie B's in the chat. She had a curry last night, apparently. So did we. Oh, did you? Yeah. What in your new house? Uh, it's oh. not. Yeah, it's a bit of a building site at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, a korma from the local uh, oh, okay. Indian. There's a friend of mine. Here. All he used to eat was Indian foods, and he ended up in hospital. He went into a korma. <laughs> 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 yeah, Susie said it was very windy around her parts this morning. I was like, ooh. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know what it is like? Maybe it's the same with you, Mark, because. Here at Manchester, there seems to be a bit of a wind trap, I've noticed. Because you step out of your house a couple of miles from here, and it's quite calm. Maybe it's a bit choppy. And if it's a bit choppy there, you know by the time you get to Manchester Airport, it's going to be a lot more choppy. Yeah. Um, I remember coming in once, and there was all these lumps of lamb floating around in the sky, and that was a bit choppy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dear me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris is saying the show's helped so many people with fear of flying. The airline should get me on board to film. That would be good. Our airline would never do that. Um, but yeah, it would, be, it would be nice to do it. To get on what? Uh, what was the question? Get, um, it'd be nice if you could get in the flight deck and film from the flight deck. Ah, but, uh, I can't yeah. see how I'm ever doing that. Not these days, anyway. No. Yeah. Matt Cam, the ledger, just had a good zoom in on the Queen, or proper airliner, 757. Now he's got the, the Jet 2330. Oh, I see Sam. Do you? Give her yeah. a wave. Yeah, Sam's here with the coat today. Bit of change of scenery from uh, staring at unpainted walls and stuff. Well, yeah. get to paint them then. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just behind us now. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what's this coming in now? Uh, Pegasus? 320 near? Yeah, fly pigs. Yes. Love that mask design up front. I've noticed Turkish Airlines have started to adopt them as well. I've seen a couple of them knocking around with their masks on as well now. Martin's back. He's looking pleased because I haven't broken anything. Hey, Despite my best lovely efforts. Lovely, lovely. Great job. Nothing's broke. Sorry, I was a, uh, a little bit longer than I saw Sam driving in as I was coming out, so. Had to hide. So the lotion <laughs> on the way to the cafe. Ah, yes. Oh, she'll get she said she'll, uh, she'll say hello to you whenever you're over there. She's not seen you for ages. Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to give them a wave. I think yeah. they're just over there, aren't they? Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah, then. Oh, I'm Dakota's loving the wellies. A bit sleepy today. I'm loving the wellies. <laughs> Yeah, you need wellies here, especially if you're a kid. <laughs> I've got me uh, big boots on. I made the mistake of coming in with work shoes uh, last week. Mm. I got the car park and I had to clean my boots off before I could come to work because they were covered in mud. Even a day like today where it's not raining, it's the same. Jet to A330 on the taxi out as well. That's the air tanker lease. Uh, of course, it's on its way to uh, Tenerife. Lovely. Ten hours. Brief. And uh, Nick Barton, uh, welcome to business class. Uh, oops, Daisy. Hey. See what I mean? I come back. I start breaking everything. <laughs> Nick, thank you very much. Get for the business back class. on. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. Been live for about an hour and a half now. 
on the Super Sunday show. And um, Yorkshire Rose uh, saying it's a year today since I uh, sadly lost the hubby. Uh, feeling a bit low, obviously, but love my planes. I'm off to Lanzarote on Tuesday, uh, saying Yorkshire Rose in the chat. Let's get some hearts in the chat for our long-term supporter and community member, Yorkshire Rose. The whole community is with you today. Let's, uh, let's share some love in the chat. And finally, the Virgin Atlantic A330 on the move. Yeah, another one that had a bit of a long wait for the... Uh, oh, OK, get... this is the second one, is it? Second one, that's done okay, this right. year. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, it was as uh, Joanna dropped the uh, rather large support that uh, the other one taxi passed. For a second arrival today. Not long now, so we'll see the Virgin Atlantic A350s back at Manchester as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we get them as early as April. Fuck and you got overhead there, Matt. Not sure, some of the red engines. <laughs> Let us know in the chat if you know what that is. Something overhead. Huh. I can't see it. Maybe a scandal, I think. Yeah. Chris saying, I've just spoke to my mate in Malaga, scattered thunderstorms today over there. Ah, oh. And 156 Andrew with a uh, £2 donation. Thank you so much. Nice day for a shortbread. This is any day's a shortbread day in my house, mate. <laughs> there's a Scandi 320 with red engines going over. That'll be it. And there's a Jet yep. 273 going over from Newcastle to Gran Canaria as well. They always route over here, don't they, then, yeah. uh, Newcastle to... Canary Islands. Yeah, the problem is over the Yorkshire area, you've got a big danger area that the military use to fly around in and do lots of hooligan stuff, which is great fun to watch. So uh, <laughs> Sometimes you can get through it, sometimes you can't. Depends how busy they are. I mean, I doubt they'd be doing much on a Sunday. The, the, the big standing joke was the best time to invade the UK would be about tea time on a Friday because all the military's gone over. <laughs> but, uh, we know that's not true. Nick Barton returning for 17 months. Loving the show today. Uh, always great to have Captain Mark on. Cheers, Nick. <laughs> Let's go and, to uh, Mario tuning in from Glasgow. Welcome to you. If you are new to the channel, guys, a very warm welcome. This is our Super Sunday show where not only do we have awesome views of the runway, but we have amazing views of the apron here as well, as you can see with that 330 taxiing in. And uh, we're also very fortunate enough to be uh, integrated with Flight Radar 24 as well. And if I press the button properly, there it goes. You can see that. So this is the place to be on your Sunday with Airliners Live. Just have a look at the forecast from Malaga, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 40% chance, moderate showers of rain, cumulonimbus clouds, 30% chance, 180, 25, gusting 35, 3,000 metres, moderate thunderstorm with rain, scattered Ooh. cumulonimbus. Might head down now later. I'll follow you. Yeah. yeah do without that. That'd be a good stream, a little, uh, little VIP streaming. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, mate, my landings at the minute are just... I need Mark to come and fix we'll, we'll him. Come in the sim with you. We'll, we'll see what's going on. Well, I think I think the issue is I think it's more the uh, so Phoenix the A three twenties had a big update. Yeah, and oh. wow, what are you guys doing today? What is going on in here today? Yorkshire Rose with the twenty gifted memberships to the community thank you so much yorkshire rose long-term supporter of the channel absolutely incredible support 20 brand new vips are now welcomed in on airliners live thanks to yorkshire rose thank you so much incredible incredible support that's amazing thank you yorkshire rose that puts us uh on 98 <laughs> brand new VIPs. Wow. 98 brand new VIPs, ladies and gents. Thank you so, so much. That's wild. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Thank you, guys. What were you saying about the Phoenix? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so Phoenix have done quite a big update. And they've also changed like the flare logic and stuff as well in it. So everything feels very weird. And I've also, not too recently, but fairly recently, got a new joystick as well. Right. So everything feels very weird at right. the minute. What did you get? Uh, Verpal. 
Verpal. Verpal. Uh, so I've got the Verpal stick. I've, to be fair, I've had this stick for a while, but I've just not done much flights in, in it. I've been using it for DCS. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, Verpal stick, and I also got the Verpal throttle. So, yeah, everything just feels a bit weird at the minute. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll get used to it. We'll Did you have that? Uh, was it the Hutas Warthog, was it, for a while? I've still got it. I've yeah. still got it. Um, I'm uh, sad might be having it off me, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, Neil also gifting an airliner's life membership to the community. Thank you so much. I need a mug feather for that. Um, the TCA one. TCA one, yeah. yeah the Frostmaster, the... get that off him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, uh, the Airbus setup is it's pretty nice, isn't it? He's, he's even got like, the uh, detents on the, the throttles. And yeah, it I was quite nice. impressed with it when I had a look. Yeah. I was quite impressed with it. Pia gifting a membership to the community. Thank you, Pia. And also some, uh, Sam... Sam Donison, I just some some Damison, Sam Donison. <laughs> gifting an airline his live membership as well. And uh, folks, oi, I think we need to clean that button. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians, 101 gifted memberships in the chat. Thank you so much, guys. An incredible, incredible amount of support. Get uh, Big John with the 100 bits as well. Sorry, Mark. Thank Don't you wait. so much, Big John. Yeah, Gary's asking, have I had a, a fighter jet wingman escort? No, we actively try and avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be straight in the office for tea with no biscuits. Wow. Another beautiful departure. And James saying, long time watcher, but first time in the chat thanks for providing the streaming community super sunday and a coffee is a perfect way to start the end of the weekend saying james well good james it's great to have you in the chat mate thank you very much for getting involved today we do love welcoming people into the chat even if you've been watching for a while the one thing we can guarantee here on airliners live is a friendly community to be part of and we actively keep on top of that we've got the best moderators i think in the industry as well and we just make sure that we keep everything really friendly really positive and uh, this is a place to be guys if you want to be part of a really genuine uh, aviation community here on airliners live so thank you very much for getting involved in the chat if you are watching and maybe you've not got involved in the chat before or if you're a new viewer and you want to get involved then uh, i'd really recommend doing so just let us know you're new and you'll get a very warm welcome from the community as miss glamour also welcomes in gary calcott to one month's free airliners live membership thank you so much for that is g crow in the chat is he <laughs> yeah nice. and rodney thank you very much as well I've seen G-Crow for a little bit. Maybe we might see an appearance today at the at the RBP. I'll call the uh, Ranger out with his shotgun. We'll soon take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> Just disappears from chat yeah. forever. <laughs> Poor old Kevin McCartan's had a rough time. He's had his third operation on his leg. He's had two rods put in. So, dear me, Paul, get well soon from us, mate. Honestly. Yeah, I hope you're feeling better lot. soon. Yeah. And uh, that 757 is uh, being pushed back from uh, for Alicante as Holly gifts five airliners live. Memberships wow. to the community. Thank you so much, Holly. Hi, Holly. Guys, if we hit 150 members today, I'll give away a hoodie live on stream. Ooh. How yeah. about that? How well, about that? Yeah, to me. <laughs> yeah, Mark's won. Sorry, guys. There you go. <laughs> rigged. 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 <laughs> right now on the roll, out to Cologne. Oh, Benjamin's loading up the Sim to fly Phoenix with the IE engine. Any route you recommend? Yeah, have a go at Shalbury. Go to Shalbury. That's, that's always an interesting one. <laughs> You'll enjoy the views. Always reminds me of when Lee Davies won that Virgin Atlantic model. That was crazy, wasn't that was it? Just unbelievable. Oh, Joanna's in the chat. Did someone say hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> Merge Green. And Mark Johnson, thank you very much. Right, if I press that button one more time. I need to move that onto its own page. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that. From now on, if I press that button by mistake, you get to keep it. There's a lot of pilot error going on here, isn't there? <laughs> there is. I think we need to get this in right, the video. Trap mitigate. <laughs> avoid some, trap yeah. mitigate. Need some safeguards in here. That's it. So yeah. we'll do a couple of investigations on what keeps going wrong with this button here. NTSB report. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was funny. So um, for those of you who maybe haven't been around for too long, we um, Lee Davies is a um, sort of long-term supporter of the channel. You'll know him. He's, he's in the chat all the time. Yeah. And um, on now. the charity live stream, we wanted uh, we had a 747 model to give away. 
and Lee really wanted it. He was, I really want that model. That's the only thing I want. It's the only. And he donated loads to the charity show as well, like thousands. He put in absolutely crazy amount of money. And um, I said, listen, Lee, like, if you don't win it, we'll buy you one, me and Andy. <laughs> we'll literally just buy just you personally one. Personally, buy you one. Yeah. Because of your support, like, what you did for the charity. And uh, anyway, it comes around to it, and I'm not joking, chat. We had this big wheel of names, and we clicked it, and it span, and it landed on Lee. There's literally and hundreds of names. just like, what? Rigged, rigged. Yeah. There's like hundreds, like Andy says, of people in the thing, and he won it. It's like just destined to win it, wasn't it? Yeah, that was mad, that. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> and Dynamic Duo gifting an airliner's live membership to the community as well. Thank you so, so much. Putting us on 113 gifted memberships as Chris Luby also gifts an airliner's oh, live hi, membership as well. Thank you so much, Chris. Hope you're doing well, mate. Um, Tina's asking, is it me departure around four so I can look out for you? Yes, it is, Tina, so I'll give you a good wave if I see you. Nice. She's always there waving. Um, that answers Sam Donison's question as well. It's four o'clock. And there was a question, is there any heating in that box that you're in? There is, but I don't put it on because it's um, it sets my allergies off. Yeah. I'm really bad with air con. It makes me sneeze and cough and everything. So I don't really need it this time of year. It, it's mostly the wind and stuff, but, you know, yeah. In the summer, we might need it for the aircon. <laughs> yeah, in the summer, it's just one especially, of those things. Especially with all glass. It's like a greenhouse, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Neil, we can't tell you who I work for. That's top secret. But you'll work it out if you're near enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris Howard's asking, if I'm flying to a destination that has bad weather, will I be opt to be pilot flying on the return legs the first time I have to do the walk round? No, if it's bad weather, I'll have to do it. That's the rules. Um, captain has to do the landings in bad weather. Which means I, I think he's it. talking about the walk around. Yeah, well, the problem is if um, if I do the flying out there, then uh, I'll have to do the walk around on the way back. And that, that's fine. I don't mind, you know. I remember doing a walk around in Belfast once in minus four and just me high vis, you know, because it didn't <laughs> oh. feel that cold. And I'm from the northeast anyway. So, uh, yeah, one of the ramp lads come up. You out of your mind? <laughs> and I'm like, what's the matter? It's minus four. It's a T-shirt whether I'd be on the beach in this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Vincent, thank you for gifting a membership as well. Really appreciate that. Especially with Lap Lapland flights as well when it's all like minus 17 degrees C and stuff. Some some pilots brave with that. Oh, I'd be all right. I'd dress up as Santa, don't I? So it's nice and warm in that suit. Oh, yeah. we got your beanie as well. Oh, mate, beanie. That, that beanie, honestly. <laughs> I remember when I first got it, I was taking the pictures doing the walk round. I think it was in crack off a of Warsaw or somewhere like that. It was freezing. There was ice everywhere in my head. It was absolutely toasty. There you go. And as one virgin A330 pushes back on the apron, uh, we have the Virgin Atlantic that arrived into us earlier on from Orlando now uh, taxiing in on the way round to Matt E. Boy. I think uh, it's Joanna in a chat who's got a flight booked for uh, Orlando with Virgin. I think she's flying on the A350 though, which would be such, such a good flight. Yeah. So jealous. I seen a question in the chat just for me specifically before from Chris79 saying, uh, did you manage to find out if Lufthansa are operating the Palma de Mallorca flights with the 747s? No, they're not doing them this year. Which is a huge shame. Uh, as far as I know, anyway, that might have changed. That was a few weeks ago that I, I, I did my research, so could have changed. But it was April, and it was Sundays in April. That It was last year and the year before. So you could buy yourself a flight from Frankfurt, I think, to Palma de Mallorca uh, on a Sunday in April with a 747. You used to do it on a 380 occasionally, didn't you? Really? Yeah, yeah, I've seen 380. Oh, well, Lewis is asking, if you're on a gusty final approach from about five miles out, it's a variable wind. Do you ever add any rudder import? Do you only have rudder just before touchdown? Yeah, you don't touch the rudder. It's just before touchdown. The no. only time you'll touch it is um, on the set, you know, on the takeoff and landing roll. You're using it to keep keep the aircraft straight. So what in about a crosswind, you'd use it to kick the aircraft straight, and uh, on an engine failure. That's something I wanted to ask you. Actually, well, that, that comes to mind. So um, I think. In Microsoft Flight Sim, this is slightly exaggerated. Right. You really have to put a lot of rudder in sometimes to keep yourself straight on the runway because okay. when there's a wind. How long after liftoff usually do you centre that rudder up? Um, fairly quickly because you don't need it once you're in the air. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. You, you want to be straight and on centre line on the runway. When you're in the air, the aircraft's going to weather cock. The, the wind's going to blow it into wind. So once you're airborne, and you know you've you've unstick, you're unstuck from the ground, and you're climbing out. Then you just gently centre them. Obviously, yeah. there's a further effect of, of you know the Airbus compensates like with this, but yeah, like it'll this, wobble a yeah. little bit. But just a nice gentle release the pressure, and you don't need it anymore. And then once you're five seconds after take on hundred feet, if you want, you can just get the autopilot in. So you think after gear, just gear up, and then and then because like I say, I think 
with Microsoft Flight Sim, it exaggerates it a lot, but it does really unsettle yeah. the aircraft a if lot. If you've got, I mean, if you've got a strong crosswind and you, you know, you've got a lot of rudder in, if it's say it's straight across it, you know, well, I mean, the limit's 38. If, you know, you, you'll have you'll have full rudder in, yeah, um, and you'll be you know be dancing away on it as you're going down the runway, right? And then once you're airborne, then you don't need it. So it's you don't you don't sort of think oh I need to release the rudder it's just sort of a natural thing you've done right. over time but yeah once you're airborne you're going up and as the gear's coming up you can generally start to just generally gently release it okay um, the idea is is that anything you do do it you know there's, there's no rush there's never any rush and we'll be talking about this in the next video there's never any rush it's just a gentle you know before you move a switch a lot of guys they put their hand on it and they think about what's the implication of actually moving this switch or pulling this knob or doing this. So there's no rush. You don't sort of greatly release it. You just It's a nice, smooth release. It's like when you reduce the thrust at 1,000 feet. It's nice to wiggle the, the thrust levers out the gate and slowly move them back rather than just clunk them back. You know, we did that in the noises video yeah. where you hear it. But again, that's another thing that I notice a lot is because I've, I've heard you say that quite a bit, so I try and replicate it in the sim as well. Yeah. When I take it out of the, the gate, the engines rev up a bit. So you hear them rev up for some reason. I don't know if that's a throttle uh, calibration issue or whether it's... Yeah, I've never seen that in the aircraft. So what, it must be a, a calibration issue. What, what happens is when you take the thrust levers out, you see the donuts move. And it'll, you'll get an, a ping on the ECAM. It'll say, you know, the thrust, the thrust is limited by lever position. Because if it's in the climb gate, the autothrust is in. The autothrust has a, a wide range. It goes up to, I think, MCT and back. And when you take it out, it's now limited to where those donuts appear, which is just below where they actually are. So if you say you're doing an auto thrust off landing, not three inches coming. Um, oh yeah, yeah three inches. That's one. That's coming out quick, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. When it's you when you, when you do auto thrust off, what you've got to do is take the thrust levers out, move them back until the little donuts go above where the needles are on the engine gauges. Um, because if you just move them out and then click the auto thrust disconnect, it goes up to climb power. Mm, yeah. And I've seen so many people do that where they've just sort of clicked them out and then got oh, auto thrust off, and suddenly you've got oh, <laughs> get them back, you know. A quick message before the ACA arrives from Janet saying, uh, "Having a morning off chapel today as our choir will be leading our Palm Sunday service tonight." Mm. So she's saving her voice. Nice one. I hope it goes well for you, Janet. Have a great. Great service. And Colin, uh, welcome back to Premium Economy. And just before the A380 lands, guys, if you are a flight simmer, I know we open up the questions to Mark for people who've just got a genuine interest in aviation. But maybe if you're a flight simmer, you're spending a lot of time in the Phoenix Airbus and you've got any sort of sim-related questions, if you're watching on Twitch, feel free to get them in the chat. We do have an active Airbus captain based at Manchester here with us uh, for a little while today. So feel free to get your questions in. But next to land, King of the Skies. Arriving in, of course, from Dubai after a seven hour, 10 minute flight. Here we go. And Aiden saying he just saw the AT-80 go over uh, my train on the viaduct in Stockport. Mm. Nice, mate. Oh, well, all right. Oh, also, I wonder, I wonder if you uh, you were on the train going past Reddish Vale, then. I wonder if that's what you mean. Because mm. there's a there's a big, massive, tall bridge up there. Mm. Ambitious Lee's asking, would I like to fly the three? Well, would I ever fly the A380? Um, I'd, I'd like to have a go in the simulator to look at all the nice toys they've got on it, but... Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to live out in Dubai. I, I quite like the idea of what they get paid. I'm a very big fan of that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Apparently, they provide quite a good package 
for your family as well. Yes, or yeah, they do. They put your kids through school, and you can, you know, they give you somewhere to live, or they'll pay you accommodations, and yeah, it's uh, and the wages. Obviously, you don't pay the ridiculous amount of tax like you do over here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the package is very, very good. But there are the downsides as well. So. And Gerard, thank you so much for your two pound donation coming into the stream today. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate that. Last time I showed to Jordan Webb, he was uh, nervous about. Um, the temperature over there because he's gone over and based in uh, Qatar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. The summers over there must be pretty, pretty hot. <laughs> well, it doesn't normally bother you because you're flying. <laughs> That's it, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. it's just like yeah. moving to a country like that as well, it just must be a massive culture shock as well because yeah. oh, it's yeah. such a big change. Yeah. Three so max on the roll out to Lanzarote. I don't think you're moving Mark out of the northeast. No. I'm honest. <laughs> no, no, I would like to go to Latvia, but not at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Very quiet. You know, Tom and Anne gives five memberships to the community as well. Absolutely incredible support, putting us on 121 airliners live vip today and as we say guys if we hit 150 today we will give away a hoodie to a viewer in the chat as the virgin atlantic taxis in from orlando one of the new uh, hoodie uh, brands i guess you could call it the garments yeah I, need to, I still need to get myself one of them, to be fair, because they're, they're quite nice, aren't they? You, you really showed me one the other, in, the, in the office the other day. Currently, Matt's the only one with one of them. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, mm. Matt's, the, Matt's the main man. They're really good hoodies, especially for this time of year when you're up in an hour and about, do I bring a jacket, do I bring, you know, this, that? I think a hoodie is, is a good shout. Yeah. There's trouble in the cafe. There's someone in Tom and Anne's usual seat. They're All sitting right. further back. I can see them. Uh, oh, that's not one. <laughs> it's going to kick off. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, King of the Skies, taxi and pastors here at the RVP. Terrific view, probably the best view you'll get in the world of the A380. Look at this. 10 out of 10. Never get tired of seeing that. Biggest passenger plane on the planet. Beautiful. And as the 380 taxis pass, the Virgin Atlantic makes a left-hand turn on the apron. Matt getting a beautiful shot of that again. Plenty of action here at Manchester Airport. Nice and busy at the RBP as well. And what speed would that be doing now, St. Karen? About 15 knots? Yeah, about that. You're normally limited on a tax, straight taxi rate to 30, and then round a corner you want to be uh, uh, below 10. And if you exceed it, then the aircraft will tell your head office. So when you land and shut the engines down, it uploads all the data from the flight to the head office. Wow. So basically the 380s are grass. It's a, yeah, the 320s are grass. <laughs> the cheeky little scamp. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a safety thing. You know, you've got to be, you know, there's certain parameters, stable at 1,000 feet, stable at 500 feet. Yeah. And if you, you know, even if you go around, it, it, you get it in China a lot. If you, the fly dress is called it, the fly dress is king. If you go around the, the corner at 11 knots, you get fined. In China, wow! What about uh, on a on a runway? If you're backtracking, is there is unlimited speed there? <laughs> it's it? supposed to be yeah. It's supposed to be 30 knots again because it's, that's your taxi. It's speed. acting as a taxiway in that yeah. sense, isn't it? Until you're ready to go. Although I did hear of someone recently. I, I was very very amused by this one. They were taxiing so fast that when they closed the thrust levers. The uh, yeah. rejected takeoff yeah. braking kicked in, which means they must have been going more than 72 knots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> the on the just, yeah. 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 Slams the brakes on, and you're like, how How do you manage that? <laughs> yeah, so would it be on max as well if they were. Yeah, I mean, it's RTO, configured. so yeah, it just yeah. goes to max braking, and wow. uh, yeah, that would have been uh, that would have ruined your day very, very quickly. See, folks, have you seen bolts on for taxi? Yeah. That's it. And as this Sun Express touches down, we have a queue of traffic down towards Juliet 1, the first of which being a Jet 2757 on the way out to Alicante. 
All the information brought in to the stream by Flight Radar 24. Huge right. shout out to them for partnering with Airliners Live to bring you all of the information of what's going on around the airport. And as you can see, by the queue forming down the end of the runway. Well, if only they had another runway they could use, wouldn't that just be so much? <laughs> <laughs> imagine. Yeah, imagine. There's a good question here from Caroline. Is there any runway I would like to land at? Um, anyone which means I can go home and go to bed. Um, <laughs> normally, if the weather's good, I'll turn around the first officer and say, you know, which way do you want to fly it? They normally want to take the aircraft down. Um, I'll just say, look, it doesn't bother me. It's a bit of tarmac to me at the end of the day. Mm. Um, you know, I'm going to get the same views. It doesn't, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I've got no real desire to particularly land anywhere. There's certain ones that we've talked about in Pilot Explains videos where I have to do the landing because it's captain's only, like Santorini and uh, uh, Jersey, Isle of Man, um, you've Corfu been, on 1-6. Given in Naples, that's quite a scenic uh, um, approach. I think so. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose, I suppose that the approach scenery can be nice. Can't you? I, know you, I know you do Geneva quite a bit. That's, yeah, that's I was one. there the other day. That was good. Yeah. That was there with, uh, first officer who's come up from uh, Gatwick was with him yesterday. Really, really good lad. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, smashing views going in there. Yeah. And uh, Rodney uh, saying, being a new member, how often do you go live? We're live from Manchester Airport every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday at the moment. The last jet to 757 in the dot com scheme now rolling down two three right. That's a good point, Simon, actually. Simon's saying, I may be having a senior moment, but where's all the easy jets? We're out flying. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. weird, isn't it? Sometimes like, you just don't see. Yeah, they're all out and about at the moment. Sometimes it's Jet 2 that has that, that phenomenon, isn't it? Where it's like you don't see any Jet 2s for an entire day. Rob Allen's saying something's wrong. I haven't kept uh, Mark has cracked a dad joke for nearly 30 minutes. And I'm on my best behaviour. I'm waiting for uh, Kevin Henry the Third to get in, or the eighth to get into the uh, chat and start them off. <laughs> yeah. Sun Express arriving in from Antalya. Was it a couple of weeks ago? The mods were getting so fed up with them in the chat, or Henry was specifically, that we made a Discord server just for dad jokes. Just so people could vent them there <laughs> yeah, instead. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Darren's asking, is Sydney the only airport that has a curfew? Do pilots get annoyed by it? Um, no, it, uh, it's not the uh, only one that has a curfew. And normally, we quite like it, um, especially if it's a base, because it means you've got to be back home at a reasonable hour rather than landing at 4 o'clock in the morning from a Dalaman. Um, yeah, so uh, it can be a pain in the backside, you know, because if you miss it, you get stuck there. I've had that before, stuck at Paris because we couldn't get out because we missed a curfew. And, mm. But, yeah, there's quite a few airports. Uh, Amsterdam's got one, uh, Basel, something. Quite a few have got them. What happens if you miss it? You just have stuck there. You just, yeah, the, the company help out normally? Is that yeah, they'll have to get your hotel room um, and the passengers as well. Sometimes they can negotiate with the airport to let you go. Um, if it's unforeseeable circumstances and the airport goes for it, they'll let you go. Otherwise, the airline gets a massive fine. Yeah. I made the uh, last year, or year and a bit ago, in winter time. I made I, I made the curfew at Amsterdam by one minute. We were it was like closes at ten, and we made it at you know twenty twenty one fifty nine. We got a little print out from Ops saying thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Singapore on the taxi out now. Nice to see. Uh, Scott's asking, just before he landed at Grand Canary on 7.5, it sounded like the engines increased to full power for a few seconds before we returned to normal. Any ideas? Yeah, I mean, it's possibly the um, auto thrust was lagging a little bit. The 7.5 is normally pretty good. It tends to hold its speed quite well, but the Airbus, it, it lags a little bit sometimes, and then uh, it'll put a load of power on. Uh, it, it'll put on as much as it can. You haven't got a lot of excess power at that height. I think we'll stick with this view for a moment. Heinen A330 pushing back as uh, typical at Manchester. A330 just lines up on the <laughs> runway as well. But, spoil, uh, spoil for choice. We'll try and bring you as much as we can any moment now. Hope you're enjoying the stream, folks. Don't forget to hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. It helps us out massively. <laughs> also getting involved in the chat as well, whether you're new or you've been around 
for a little while. Debbie saying that my work Singapore colleague. Uh, as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, Debbie saying a, a colleague is on the 350 to Singapore, and he's got a connecting flight from Dubai to Melbourne. Uh, he's sat on the right-hand side, seven or eight windows in. Mm -hmm. I don't right. know, we'll keep an eye open for that. Hey, that's, that's probably first class, that, or at least business, right? And John tuning in from Australia. Welcome, John. Ken's asking, where's the worst air I've flown in for poor uh, English ATC? Um, I can't say on the stream because someone will probably get offended because that's what happens these days. But there yeah. are certain air traffic controllers that are better than others in certain areas of the world. Um, and sometimes yeah, we'll, you get surprised. We'll avoid that one, yeah, we? sometimes you do get surprised how good they are when you think they're going to be bad. But uh, yeah, we can't really say. saying apparently there's a C5 Galaxy overhead soon. Oh, saying Cohen in wow. the uh, Twitch chat. We'll have to let us know which direction it's going from. We'll have to rely on uh, Mr. Smith, I think. I oh, always, yeah. I always struggle to see things like that, though. I know maybe Matt's different, but... Oh, can you see it? Yeah, it's by Lancaster. Oh, so it's it's going to go right over the top from behind, uh, right. behind us. We will keep an eye open for that. Cohen, thank you very much mm. for the heads up. Yeah, they're usually quite tricky to see them, especially the props, but obviously a C5 Galaxy might be a bit easier. Oh, yeah. I got a visual. Really? Got wow. a visual? Got what, it's, in, it's over Lancaster? Not visual, but on the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the app. Like, really, he's, got, he's got the 200 to 600s in today. <laughs> <laughs> you borrowed my wildlife lens. I was going to say, you? next time you get wildlife photography session, <laughs> take, take that with you. Oh, there's all the kingfishers over there. He's not called Matt Campbell Edge for nothing, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's this? <coughs> a jet stream? King Air, oh, King, uh, uh, King Air 250 in Ooh. from Jersey. Nice little flight. That's cool. I may have been a bit silly uh, yesterday because Leeds was uh, gusting 38. So I uh, I took off from Barton in a diamond and went for a bit of a spin. <laughs> 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 the height of realism. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha with a £10 donation as well saying another donation for a brilliant channel love the shows as always and hello to Captain Matt from Sasha thank you so much Sasha I think I can put a little heart on that as well there we go thank you very much for that really appreciate that huge donation supporting the cost of the stream today and uh, you guys gifting memberships to the channel 122 wow brand new VIPs in the channel today if you are watching on YouTube and you want to watch ad-free, you can either uh, use a sub on the Twitch channel or head over to our YouTube channel, Twitch Crew, and uh, you can watch ad-free over on our YouTube channel. Let's have a listen into this. This might just sound took a quite bit of a good. turn, so it might get, might get direct overhead. Okay, nice. Ooh. Nice, nice, nice. Coming to Manchester, is it? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> hey, Bev, it's great to see you. Hi, Bev. And Dave Stevens, hello to you. It's nice, this plane. Oh, it's just a wild turn now. Uh, it's going to go way north now, I think, the C5. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Miles of Smiles, the name on the Tui Dreamliner departing there, 787-8. To eat Echo. It's the one that took my mum out to Thailand a couple of, well, the other week. Haven't got me postcard yet, Andy. All right. Mm, have a word. Takes a while. <laughs> yeah. 
I've got a lovely message here. Aviator Steve. Um, hi, Mark. Lovely to meet you in the RVP last week and really enjoyed the chat. One aviator to another. I met Steve with Tom and Anne last week. He's an la absolutely lovely bloke. He used to be an aerobatic competition pilot. I mean, he's forgotten more than I'll ever know. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Such, you know, you know, absolutely fantastic guy. Such experience. It was really, really good. Um, really good to have a catch up. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully uh, catching up with him again soon at some point. We may have been uh, swerved, I'm afraid, folks, by Taking this C5. Turn, yeah. It's made a right left-hand turn now. May, may get a little glimpse of it soon. May, 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 may get a little glimpse. Okay, I'll keep an eye on that. There's also a lot of cloud coverage as well now, so... He's at 35,000, yeah. isn't he? That's a shame. Oh, I can see it. Oh, I can. I think, yeah, I can see it. It's trailing. It's in the gap of the clouds. It's like a, a U shape in the clouds. Behind us? Yeah, it's behind oh, us. Yeah. If you look over the uh, port cabin, Andy, it's up above it. I think Matt might be. I don't know if Matt can see. I think it. Matt will be the guy. For yeah, us. it'll be going in the clouds soon. Yeah. Hey, Annette, thank you for the 20 months of support. Really appreciate that. Thank you so so much. Love the show. I'm proud to be a member. Thank you so much for that. Cool, Red Airlines, my good ladies, uh, one of their favourite colour schemes. Yeah, we do love the Logan Airs. Here on the channel. Never so close to it. Yeah, it's up in that gap in the clouds. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we may catch it, Andy, when it goes in this big patch of blue here, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Matt's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. Sun Express pulling on to stand, looking awesome. as a Jets Jet 2 AT21. Roll tickets. And Mr. Bing Bong himself. Uh, gifting an airliner's live membership. Thank you, Paul. I've seen your message as well. I'll definitely get back to you, mate. As soon as we're done, I'm a bit of an octopus down here at the minute, but uh, sorry to hear about your news, mate. There's so much going on <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Paul G. Smith, fellow, welcome. Yeah, we're keeping an eye open, guys. Don't worry, we will uh, bring you a shot of that as and when we can. It's bad this weather because sometimes it's like complete, almost overcast, and now it's like loads of blue sky, it just keeps alternating. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And Cloud. Dominic tuning in from Bavaria, welcome. Beautiful. And G. Crow. Business class member. <laughs> Whoa. Time out this, says Chico. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. You know the rules, whoever you are. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much for the support. <laughs> Listen, you asked for it. You don't tempt them. Don't tempt them. But no, thank you very much. And yeah, just uh, just remember, we do need to keep it family friendly and all the usual things. Thank you very much for your uh, interaction, though, in the chat. I suppose he is a bird. <laughs> so whereabouts would this be then? You're looking towards the control tower, are you? Was that that direction? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be well past that now, though. It should. Uh... Yeah, there's loads of clouds in the way now, isn't there? Yeah, there's a gap above the threshold. It might come out there, but I think it's in that big lump that's above it's the three. It's literally right down the end of the runway now, like yeah. pretty much perfect there. So. Like, Clouds may be blocking us, I'm afraid. It's like if I, essentially there, isn't it? It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, A330, though, pushing back on Matt Cam, looking absolutely brilliant. Giving Andy a second to grab a drink if you want one. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Got a uh, Singapore A350, going to be departing soon as well. Don't want to miss that. There you are, who's asking for an easy jet? There's one landing now. <laughs> this A330's on the way out to Bridgetown, just getting pushed back, because John returns for two months of premium economy, saying thanks for the entertainment throughout the week. Thank you very much for your support to the channel today. C5's over the big Don at the moment, should be waking Susie B up. That's it. <laughs> you see it, Suze? <laughs> <laughs> and Jeanette 
gifting an airliner's live membership to the community. Thanks so much, Janet. Really appreciate that as we push towards 150 members on today's show. Wow. We are 26 VIPs away from uh, doing a little giveaway in the chat. Doing a little giveaway in the chat if we hit 150 members today. And uh, Mr. Simpson, are you working tonight? Are you off all day today? Sounds like... Uh, it's me, no. Uh, please stop spamming the chat, first of all. And second of all, please don't illegally download our content and put it on your own channel. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have enough of that already. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Simpson might be doing a flight down to Malaga with you. Hey, let's do your Malaga. You're yeah. working today. Right. Just can't get the stuff. Linda, thank you very much for... Wow, gifting five airliners live memberships. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Will, Wind Canal. Is that a... Uh, <laughs> I won't say what that uh, username stands for. Thank you very much for gifting five airliners <laughs> live memberships to the community. Really appreciate that. Putting us on 134 brand new VIBs. You're going to start doing VATIM events of wherever Captain Mark's flying to. That's it. <laughs> Is the event. Racing Mark down to <laughs> Is it positive rate? State bait. There we go. <laughs> I'll show you that. Wow, not much separation there. Look, it's already touching down. That was a late landing clearance there. As long as you get it, that's the main thing. <laughs> Have you ever seen that, Mark, where you're just about to touch down and there's a plane taking off in front of you? Yeah, I mean, at Gatwick, it gets quite tight. Heathrow gets quite tight. Well, even my just one trip down to Gatwick, I've seen a few go-arounds from, from just separation issues, you know. They were that close. Yeah, I did Newcastle years ago, the 7-3, we were coming in in this biz jet had landed and he didn't realise where he was supposed to be taxing and he sort of stopped on the runway we're getting closer and closer oh. and I'm sitting here thinking I oh, know what's coming here yeah and um, eventually they, you know they, they take look left turn here go on the business you know the business area of GA Park and just as he starts to turn up the captain went now this is tough go around so hit the toga switches up we went and just as we started to go around they cleared us to land <laughs> oh, <laughs> too late <laughs> standard isn't it yeah See the aircraft vacating in front of us, uh, in from uh, Chambre. Yeah, do that in the sim, you'll enjoy that. And Richard says, just subscribe to the channel, brilliant footage. So let's get some waves in the chat, brand new community member Richard Ratcliffe. Welcome to you, Richard. Welcome in. Singapore, excuse me, A350 lined up, next to go. One of two flights we see here at Manchester, this one on the way out to uh, Singapore. We also see them operate a flight to Texas. Texas. Yow. Yow. Cheers, uh, Patrick. Kind words. Great show again, guys. Watching from a sunny Cleethorpes. It's everywhere sunny, but here. Yeah. I suppose it's it's sunny compared to what we used to. Well, it's sunny in Sheffield, because that's where she lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and Rob Allen for the 10 months, a year since I found the channel, and I'm loving the streams. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, me too, Nathan Peel. Which, well, which was back there, but there you are. Beautiful departure there of the Singapore A350. 900 series yeah there was a, a couple of comments uh, on that video that Sunny featured in saying this whatever Sunny's doing for a job she's in the wrong profession <laughs> should be a pilot <laughs> <laughs> yeah they all did brilliantly didn't they I mean if you go on the VIPs new VIPs if you go on the VIP content on uh, YouTube the community you can see I did a narration video after it yeah explaining you know various things why we did certain things and why certain things happened it was it's quite. It was quite an interesting. Um, for me, it was a learning experience because every 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 one that did it, we learned something from the first to the last. Yeah. 
And, as, and like I said in the video, as the, as the, the dark came in, it made poor old Henry's life so much more difficult because <laughs> you had this washout from the lights and the buttons and, you know, he couldn't find the buttons because it got dark and I felt so sorry for him, but he did a fantastic job and, you know, everyone everyone made it down, so that's the important made thing. It, made it interesting as well, didn't God, it? God, didn't it? Just, yeah. yeah. Didn't do my heart rate any favours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for those who may not know, we recently did a video over on our other channel, Airliners Lounge where we uh, got three random people who aren't pilots to, in a simulator to see if they could land the plane if the pilots uh, were unwell, uh, too unwell to even fly the plane. So they took con control. And then Mark was the guy, the air traffic control liaison, uh, the guy who was on the radios communicating with them and how to land the plane without the pilots present. And... Uh, yeah, there, it was a great video, and it recently passed 50,000 uh, YouTube views as well, so Yay. it's doing really well for a channel with just 6,000 subscribers. Not bad. Yeah. Cheers, Ash, for using your Twitch Prime on the channel. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, Sinead's in the chat. Hello, Sinead. Nice to meet you and your sister at the RVP. And Glad you enjoyed the bid. Wind canal. <laughs> saying it's German for wind tunnel when new uh, planes or cars are tested for the flow resistance saver. Wow, nice. That's what uh, Sam's brother works as. He, uh, he's not a wind canal, he's a. Uh, he operates one for one of the major Formula One teams, believe it or not. Wow. So as a result, Sam's been watching lots of Formula One, and I've been kind of getting into it as well. It's interesting. So not something you need to take care of after a spicy boon and then. No. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Stephen Carlin, thank you so much for the three months of Airliners Live memberships. Really appreciate that. Business class member as well. And Seb saying, BA1 World, A320 is only five minutes out. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. Am I right, right in thinking as well in German that um, the word ambulance translates to sick wagon? Frankenwagen, isn't it? That's yeah. it, yeah, yeah. It That'd translates to sick wagon, doesn't it? Sick wagon. Oh, no. <laughs> it's very, very descriptive. <laughs> I mean, Get in the sick wagon. Or oh, you. <laughs> You're sick. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grant's asking if I've flown in Salzburg. Um, I did um, on the 7.5. I haven't done it with on the Airbus or the 7.3, I don't think. I can't remember anyway. But, yeah, years ago on the 7.5 I did. I remember going in once on my line training. There was thunderstorms everywhere. And we're, we're, li you know, we're lined up with the runway, coming in and land. I can see this lightning coming out of the, you know, the left-hand side. <laughs> oh, this is good. We really want to get on the ground here. But, yeah, I like Salzburg. It's a nice one. There's an interesting town to the north of it, uh, in between there and, uh, I think it's Munich. Um, very interesting named town. I can't say it on the stream, but lots of people go there and have their photo tank next to the, uh, ah. the, the road sign. I know that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 3.30 on the roll. And 3.30 on its way to Beijing, 5,043 mile flight. As it passes through the windows of the Nats Tower on Matcam as well. Nice. I do love that shot. If you are watching on Twitch, don't forget to check those Twitch Primes, folks. It really does help the channel out a lot. Wake up Twitch crew if you're there. Get involved in the chat as well. And Diego, a returning business class member. Thank you so much, Diego. Welcome back to you. And uh, your support puts us uh, only 15 memberships away from a hoodie giveaway on YouTube. 135 brand new members on today's show. That's crazy. Thank you so much for the support. Really hear the howl of that Aer Lingus A330. Them CF6 engines, pretty distinct. <coughs> Noisy. That sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, I used to have them on the two E76s at Manchester. Sadly, they're not with us anymore, but these uh, Aer Lingus UK planes do still have them. Uh, Seb's asking Sharma, Hagar and Mark no preference. Um, I don't mind. Um, it makes no difference. I just like the part, point that I fly past Mount Sinai and always do a, a big P8 to the passengers about uh, the exodus and, you know, all the history in that area and, you know, how years ago the exodus from Goshen just near Cairo because we fly past that and all the way down to Mount Sinai and um, 
it leads on as well to Susie G saying, um, oh, Mark's always so chilled out. Does any get you flustered on flight path from the Scran? Um, not really, no. And we, when we had this turbulence last night, uh, it got quite rough. And I, I did a, a quick PA to the passengers in my nice, calm, relaxing voice just to say, you know, having a few bumps, nothing to worry about. <laughs> calm everyone down, and it's all nice. And, uh, we'll be out handing out some after eights very yes, soon. Yes, it's great. And Chester <laughs> might say, you know, it doesn't need just the sort of voice you need to hear on the PA. Um, I did a big, I've got a really big spiel I give at uh, Malta. I was at Malta last night. And it's all about St Paul and Aristarchus and St Luke getting shipwrecked there, you know. And give them all the history there and, you know, the healing of the father of Publius, the Roman governor, and talking about the Cathedral of Medina. And did this big speech on the ground before we went. And suddenly all the passions start clapping. I was like, oh, that's good. And I'm like, what's he doing? What's he on about? You know, and... Uh, Can we just get going? <laughs> yeah, I want to go home. <laughs> and then at the end... Of We're really talking <laughs> more flying blue. Yeah. A lovely lady came and said how much she enjoyed it. So that, that was nice, you know, but... It's normally the cabin crew. What's he on about now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I prefer that, you know. I don't think I've ever had a, a, a pilot give a, a, a PA that's o o o outside of just the usual stuff, you know. Yeah. Over there at Gibraltar, where they explain, you know, the weather phenomena that you get from Gibraltar over the rock. Um, other than that, I've never had, like, a, a story. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got one for almost every... Uh, every um, destination. The only story I've ever had on the plane was I'm not allowed to smoke so neither are you. I've had a terrible <laughs> day. Everything's gone wrong that could have possibly gone wrong today and then all the passengers are looking at each other yeah, and going, well, I guess apart good, from Crash because you're still here. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's, uh, that's exactly what we want to hear. Cheers, mate. Yeah. I used to fly this really, really grumpy Yorkshireman who hated the job and hated the company and he was miserable as sin. He was a lovely bloke but he was miserable as sin and the cabin crew called up and said, the passenger are asking where we are, can you do a PA? Oh, I find must. You have control. And he picks the answer up. And you, some of you are asking where we are. We're halfway. Thank you. Click. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, every head in my hands, like, no. <laughs> We're halfway. <laughs> that was it. Oh, no. You're <laughs> nearly there. Yeah. Yeah. Yorkshire Airlines, right there. Yeah, he yeah, was like that, yeah. He was asking, did I see the lava flows in Iceland last week when I went? No, um, I didn't. It was too cloudy. I um, didn't see a thing. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> we were talking about that on the stream, weren't we? We were all saying, like, oh, is there a volcano erupts while you're there? And then it kind of does, but yeah, definitely wasn't as bad as it could have been. Yeah, I had to uh, phone up operations and get some charts to find out where, where these, because they had all these danger areas printed out, and we didn't have the charts for it. And I phoned them up, and I'm like, well, where's, you know, have you got any charts where these danger areas are, where this, you know, these, these, this, this steam and this, this ashes? Oh, no, no, we haven't. Oh, no, no, everyone else is getting in. I'm like, well, I'm not everyone else. I need to know this, you know, before I go anywhere. <laughs> and eventually I talked to flight planning and he ended up, after about 20 minutes, emailing me all these maps where I could and couldn't go. Oh, great. <laughs> no, it's all. This is something I've not seen, the One World PA next to land. Nice I'm catch. Sorry if I have seen it. I don't remember. I think it's relatively new, this, this, this uh, livery on this plane. So I've uh, mixed opinions for sure. Some people love it, some people don't like it. Looks quite good on the picture. We'll see how it looks in mm. real life. If you are enjoying today's stream, though, folks, click that like button. 1,221 likes so far. Can we get to 1,500 <laughs> likes before the end of the show? I'm sure we can. Nearly 2,700 live viewers tuning in. Welcome, everybody. Mike's asking, how come I'm not a fan of Corfu Airport? Does the turbulence never bother you? Uh, turbulence, yeah, it just annoys me. Um, I don't like Corfu because sometimes the ATC can be a bit ropey and sometimes you have to do the circle around the bay to the, north, the, the other runway. We did that in the sim with Feza in good weather. Last time I did it, it was thunderstorms and strong wind and low cloud and we wow. only just got in. But yeah, it's a short runway and it's bumpy as you like. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, congrats, Jake. That's awesome, mate. Oh, nice good lad. One, dude. Here it is, British Airways One World Special. Yeah. Quite nice, actually. I like it. That's right. IAEs on board as well. What do we think in the chat, folks? I'll yeah. give it a yay. Yay or nay? Yeah, a Wookiee on the way out as well. Nice. Sweet. Budding pilot Liam Fletcher's uh, watching. He's uh, He always comes to say hello in the, uh, at the task fairs. So he's uh, hopefully he's going to get an airline job soon. Ah, we'll nice. see. I'll just keep nagging him to do it. <laughs> so but yeah, he'd be a good pilot. It'd be good to have him on board. I like that. 
It's quite tidy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's only special, but it doesn't look bad, I wouldn't say. Yeah. I quite like how they perfectly fit the text in between the doors. And Mr. Jake, gifting a membership. Thank you very much, mate. 136 brand new members. 14 memberships away from a hoodie giveaway. If you want to support the channel by gifting memberships, hit the dollar symbol then click gifted memberships. As next to land, a Ryanair wobbling it in from Dublin. Be a bit light that aircraft now. Mm. We yeah. need some BA wide bodies here. We do. We were set to get some um, BA Dreamliners here for um, the STS hangar for maintenance this summer. I don't think that's happening now. I think there's another client who's uh, taken that instead. Uh, some freight conversions from the US, I think. Hey, Ray, thank you very much. Gifting a membership to the channel. Appreciate you, Ray. I look like that Ryanair came in quite quick. Well, it's certainly rolling in a bit longer than usual. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, short flight as well. And Susie, thank you very much for supporting the channel with a gifted membership. Really appreciate that as Paul Brooks follows that with five brand new VIPs wow. being welcomed to the airliners live community. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. That's huge. And thanks, Susie. Nathan's asking, do I prefer 07 or 25 at Newcastle? And he prefers 25 because he can see it where he lives in Sunderland. He's not far from Fez. I like 07 because I live off the end of the final approach in Prudhoe. So come around my house. But yeah, it's... Ah. Yeah, be careful, because Fez is not far from you, chap. <laughs> I think he flew from Newcastle the, the other week when we went to the Tenerife Jet 2. Yeah. Wasn't cheap, though. Was it not? No, uh, I think it's with Jet 2, and you just book flights. I think it doesn't doesn't work out very cheap, usually. I still can't get over the fact he behaved himself. <laughs> I'm still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> Erling is a 3300 series. Now, it was nice that trip to Tenerife. We uh, stayed in a, an old, like, really old townhouse. Um, it's like a cottage, but multi-storey. And um, it worked out dead cheap. It's an Airbnb stay. Probably about 70 quid each per for two nights. Um, and it was so big that uh, we even had our own floor each. And we had our own balcony each. Nice. It was really nice. And it had three bathrooms as well. And you also saved a euro each as well, didn't you, by not sending me a postcard? <laughs> uh, possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any sticks of Rocky, let's be fair. Oh, no. It's not really a thing over there. <laughs> yeah, I used to know a bloke whose nickname was The Rock. <laughs> but we won't go into why. <laughs> when you cut him in half, he's got the word written all the way through him. <laughs> That's some fake Ray-Bans, though. Could have got you there. Oh, Phillips from Sunderland as well. Can't see Fezza. <laughs> Whenever my dad used to go abroad, there was, uh, they used to go to the same place. There was a guy there who used to sell uh, watches. He, he was called Hiley. So he used to just call him Hiley Suspicious. <laughs> 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 he didn't see him one year, so he must have gone next. <laughs> I remember years ago we used to go down to Cape Verde in the 75 and there's all these bumsters there trying to sell you some ridiculous old tat, you know. Yeah. Oh, you want to buy this, sir? Uh, what would I want to buy that? Like? Just... 2G minor on the pushback as well. Yeah, it's always in a Turkey is always a popular place for that, isn't it? You go to Turkish markets, and not only do you get hassled to death, but you also uh, 
might come away with some uh, what is the term um, nearly genuine products I think no, they call yeah, it yeah. <laughs> almost genuine tat tat yeah, yeah. that's it yeah. <laughs> spot on <laughs> I mean, I can't comment because that aftershave I wear that they will comment on at the Taz Fair. It's a fake creed. It's actually fooled fool a bloke who wears the real one. <laughs> no, you're wearing creed. No, mate, I'm wearing a fake one off Amazon. Oh, it smells just like mine. I'm like, well, yours is 300 quid a bottle and mine's 30 quid a bottle. But, you know, I'm glad you can't tell the difference. <laughs> the one your Dalaman flights, is it? No, no Amazon's finest. Uh, Amazon, Dalaman, all the same. Yeah. Liam Fletcher, thank you so much for gifting the membership, putting us six VIPs away from uh, hoodie giveaway. Is this easy, Jeff? Rotates out to Milan. Liam's in the airport pub, you lucky man. Bowls are working, I'll be going and seeing him. Anybody going to see him, mate? It's not the only one, it's not the, the, the only one Barry Bidwell, is, is it? it? Is. Oh, oh, excellent. No way. Hope you're doing well, mate. Hello to Linda as well. Welcome, guys. Hello, hello. Hi, Linda. And uh, to you, Dreamline, a pushback on Matt Camp as well for uh, Varadero. Beautiful. I've um, said last week in the stream, I found all my old 737 question papers. And I've been taking photos of them and sending them off to Niels because he's doing his 7-3 rate. And one of the uh, cabin crews on the TUI scholarship sponsorship seems to have sent them to him as well for when he needs them. But nice. yeah. it's quite funny You're looking through all these question papers. Oh, I'm glad I don't fly this thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just... Oh. You know, it, that, that reminded me. Did anyone, any of you guys see Seb's message about the Jet 2 737-300 flight deck? Oh, my God. I saw God. a picture of it. Yeah, yeah that, that thing looks ancient. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, it's like, it's like, a, like a World War II <laughs> submarine or something, you know. Well, that, I mean, that was one point. That was the modern one, wasn't it? Because the original one, you know, the, the, the 100 and the 200, it had the, all the old steam-driven dials and the, the the block of six instruments. It didn't have the screens. It was only when the 3, 4, 5, 6 came out that they yeah. got the screens. And then, obviously, the NG, the 7, 8s, 9s, Tiny, got the, the new sun. wing and the big screens. And I was going to say, I guess the screens kept growing, didn't they? Because back then, you were like a little tiny, little, like, almost like an arcade machine. Yeah. Like a little, uh, Very similar to 7.5 screens, but obviously the 7.5 ones in the centre were much bigger. Right. Um, but, you know, I've often said it. You take a Tesla dashboard and stick it in a Ford Cortina, it's still a Cortina, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people, when I, whenever I got pictures, because I, I don't know a lot about, like, what goes in what flight deck I'd get pictures of um, like the family when we visit the Jet 2 757 flight decks always get the comments of oh they've got the new screens in there and they don't look that new but I guess they're, they're quite big now they are to, yeah compared to when, when you flew them I guess Nathan's asking is the approach speed higher on a 73 than other size, uh, size jets always seems to look very fast approach yeah on the uh, the NG the 789s they put a new wing on it it's more critical and um it's it does come in quicker, but you got you normally land with flaps 30, which is sort of similar to flaps three on a 320-319. So yeah, it would be quicker. Um, I can't remember. I mean, it's years since I've flown that horrible thing, but I seem to think at 130, you know, maybe 140 knots wasn't wasn't an uncommon speed, whereas the no. the 320 is near 130. Rocky Wolf, thank you very much for using your sub on the channel as well, mate. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. Cheers, Rocket Wolf. Working their way towards uh, winter over there. Patricia um, saying morning. Uh, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. I'm glad you're enjoying the uh, Fear of Flying videos. I'm glad they're helping you. And like I said, feel free to message me any questions. Barry and Linda both gifting five airliners live memberships hey. to the community as well. Thank you very much, guys. We are one membership away from giving away a hoodie on the stream. The Jet 2757 blasting out of Manchester Airport there. Beautiful departure. And Sam Donison gifting a Airliners Live membership. Yes, thank you. Sam Donison. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to do some work behind the scenes, guys, and get this giveaway ready for you. So I'll let you enjoy the planes for the moment. 
Yeah, stick around, folks, because anyone in the chat can win a airline is live hoodie Yay. live on stream and i did see a question in the chat saying do we need to give the size and stuff what we do folks is um if you do win we ask you to email us we can verify the win that way and also then you can provide us with things like a dress to ship it to and also the size as well reginald saying uh, good morning to you all I'd like to know if i've ever done an emergency landing and if so what's it like i only done them in the sim so far and that's how i like it and i want to keep it that way um, and there's another message. Lewis is asking, how often do I do a flap three takeoff? Very, very, very rarely. It's normally flap one. Um, if it's a short runway, then you would use possibly flaps two or three, depending on the weight, somewhere like Isle of Man in Jersey. But even then, most of the times, the weights, because of the distance we're flying, it's normally flaps one. I can't remember the last time I did a flaps three takeoff. I've done a few flaps too, but it, again, it's very, very rare. I take it you've done a lot of emergency landings in the sim, though. Like yeah, oh yeah, every, every six months, you know. Yeah. I just did mine a few weeks ago, three days of it, and it was uh, it was uh, interesting. Did it? Well, I mean, I did, a lot of, in on this, did a lot okay. of flaps three uh, landings. Did one yesterday. Did one uh, come back from Geneva last week. In fact, that plane coming off the runway that looks very familiar. That one. Ah, it's very familiar. Tango Kilo, the reg. And Paul Davis is in the chat. Hello, Mr. Bing Bong. I was looking forward to seeing you today. And Hello. I hope you're all right, mate. Just Joanna's saying she's feeling as deeply safe as houses as she knew I was on the captain. If I was the captain on her flight, that would be good. That would be good. You get a flight deck visit and you can have some selfies with all your merch. Yeah. Nathan's asking what flaps do Aero, Aero Super use? Uh, none, I think. That's why. That's what happens. <laughs> are the uh, the sweeties usually just for the uh, the cabin crew? Are they? No, they're for any visitors as well. Nice. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, nice pair of Wookiees departing. Airbus A220, 300 series, heading back to Paris and Charles de Gaulle with Air France. And uh, interesting that EasyJet had a name as well, Amy Johnson. It's part of the female pilot initiative that EasyJet uh, do, and they started it a few years ago when Carolyn McCall was CEO. She decided that we, she wanted more um, more of the ladies in the flight deck, so yep. they started this sponsorship scheme um, just for ladies to fly planes, and uh, it's been very successful, and they've got quite a few people in. Right, folks, uh, it is 11.38, exclamation mark, hoodie in the chat, no spaces, and at 11.30, we will be drawing the winner, exclamation mark, hoodie, or 11.40, in the chat, uh, and 11.40, sorry, we will be drawing the winner, so uh, get it typed, folks, and thank you all for supporting the channel today. We might make this a regular thing if we hit certain milestones of gifted memberships in the chat. We may do some merch giveaways. Absolutely. Sounds great. Especially on the Super Sunday show. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, this won't work if you're watching it back pre-recorded, of course. Yeah, and you need to be on YouTube, guys. If you're watching on Twitch, head over to our YouTube channel. I might put in, try and win it, and if I win it, then I can give it back to you and say, do another one. <laughs> uh, Keith's asking, how's cost index determined, and do you have to stick to it? Yeah, um, it's on the flight plan. We get a flight plan from the operator flight planning department, and it has a cost index on there. We normally use four. I mean, on the 75, we used to use 45, and then it dropped to 35, and everyone was moaning, oh, again, it's so slow, and it's still point, you know, decimal eight zero, but... Uh, we normally use four. Um, we have variable sp uh, speed limits if we're going on the oceanic routes up to Iceland or down to the Canaries. And yeah, they want you to stick to it because it's the, the, all the big mega computers that run the Lido flight planning system have worked out that's the optimum. You, you know, zero, we use zero in the climb. It saves a cup full of fuel, but when you take it over 350 aircraft doing eight or ten flights a day, that adds an awful lot of fuel saving. Um, it's always a good idea to go a little because zero is the lowest. It's, it's right on the, near the bottom of the drag curve. It's always better to go a little bit faster because if you get a little bit slower, you're not getting more drag because you're on the downside of the drag curve. And without drawings, it's hard to explain. You want to be going a little bit so you've got a little bit of energy to play with and it actually burns a bit less fuel. As you can see, Turkish A330 has been pushed back. But, ladies and gents, let's give it a roll. Let's... Uh have a look at this then, shall we? So, who is going to win this? It is going to go to Yabush. Richard P. Richard P. Richard P. 
you have won yourself a hoodie, my friend. Please drop us a message. Let us know what hoodie you'd like, what size, what colour, what design. Yeah, put this in an email, ideally. You've got a free hoodie on the way to you. Let's get some 10 out of 10s in the chat for Mr. Richard P. Congratulations to you, mate. Nightbot has uh, drawn your name out of the hat, and now we will send Nightbot on its way because oh. we're back up. Why did we move to Streamlabs in the first place? What was the reason There was for a few it? extra features, wasn't there, like... Oh, right. I know okay. Miles was one, but there was a few others, I think, as well. Got you, got you, got you. I like Knight, but he's funny. There yeah. you go. I don't think play, he likes being play, caged up by Loopy, but I was going to say, yeah. I'll play, <laughs> play Loopy for the humour as well. <laughs> Loopy has uh, flip full control. Mm. Well yeah. done, Mr. Richard mm. P. If you're in the chat, I'm sure you are. Yeah, send us an email, contact at airlinerslive.com. Put all the information in there, like I said, address and size as well, and we'll send you over an Airliners Live hoodie. And Richard P, there he is, returning for 26 months, saying thanks, guys. Something to keep me warm at the RVP. There you hey, go. And thank you all, perfect. folks, <laughs> for gifting memberships today. 150 VIPs welcomed into the community today. Absolutely incredible amount of support to the channel. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed that little giveaway as well. Ryanair just arrived in from uh, Pisa. At the similar uh, refit. I know when they first started doing them, we used to say, oh, look, you know, those bottom winglets are just begging to be getting knocked off by a fuel truck. <laughs> I remember there's a picture at uh, Heathrow of a, a, a lot Polish Max, and one of the catering wagons had been driven into the winglets, and it, it had on the side of the catering wagon, excellent. So we were sitting there thinking, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> there's been a couple of clips as well of uh, wing strikes as well when they, they yeah. hit the ground as well. It's obviously not very common at all, but has happened yeah i remember hearing a story that md11 did it at the checkerboard mountain somehow managed to knock the little two foot winglet off the bottom of the wing on the actual checkerboard hill at the kai wow. tak you know hong kong and <laughs> jake says i've nearly ripped a couple off a few times with me steps <laughs> <laughs> lufthansa just touching down on two three right here a320. Yeah, I'm excited to see this uh, Turkish Airlines A330, was that? Yeah, it's pushed back, yeah. I haven't seen them for a while, you know. There was a time when they were just, like, sending loads of wide bodies to Manchester. There it is, on the taxi out. Like, hey. Every Sunday we'd see the uh, the 330. Now that the summer's coming back around, and um, Istanbul <laughs> is a super busy route. I'm, I'm sure right, even EasyJet have... Uh, flights there these days um, of course Turkish have many flights per day Pegasus as well yeah it's a long taxi route Istanbul really Is really it? long yeah it's a big, yeah. big city to Istanbul I think yeah it's I mean it's popular these days for I'm sure many people know why but also Turkish Airlines it's their hub and Turkish are a big airline and you can fly on from Istanbul to lots of different destinations uh, with a decent decent value proposition I remember when EasyJet launched that um, Istanbul route, and it was when the Champions League final was in Istanbul. I don't know how, if they planned that. I don't know. I don't think they did, but it ended up being literally on the day or the day before. <laughs> it was that was that would, that would have been a very busy flight, put it that yeah. way, <laughs> and a very rowdy one at that. Our cheek and cheerful's asking, "Do I take off and land at LBA, and what's it like?" I try and avoid it like the plague. <laughs> um, I've got a few friends who've been in and out of there. It can be a very, very, very challenging. Uh, Challenging uh, approach than landing that one. <laughs> I was going to say, you've never, never been diverted there, but it's usually the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if the wind was favouring it, it was a storm or whatever, and it was, you know, right down the runway, it could be considered because it is a funny direction runway, but um, yeah, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't choose to go there. Not many airlines fly from there, I know. Jet 2 is pretty popular there. Yeah. Ryanair, do they? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid it like the bloke, to be fair. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult airport. There. It's like, I mean, they call it, some people call it the Bristol of the North. Bristol can be quite uh, challenging as well with the lumpy up and down runway and um, the air traffic restrictions in the area as well. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's it can be a tricky one. Seb said Sun Express just started at Leeds today. Hey, that's great. Oh, okay. Just again, it shows how popular Turkey is. Yeah, with uh, 
There's an awful lot of people who uh, who are flying there at the moment. Mm. Andy Thomas asking, will you guys be recovering the normal Jet 2 service from Liverpool on the 28th? Most, most likely. Good. Most Good. likely. Which is cool because uh, next month we uh, are flying out of uh, Liverpool with Jet 2. Oh, yeah. uh, end of April. Oh, I bet I don't get a postcard then. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be uh, for Dakota's birthday. That was oh, of course. I think that's going to be that's going to be mega lot. Quite interesting to see that uh, three thirties push back. We've also got the twenty one Neil pushing back from Turkish as well. A couple of Turkish movements as the uh, three thirty makes itself visible around the corner. There it is. I think what Jetter at Liverpool is they're only, they're only going to be having four planes based there initially with over fifty routes. So as you can see, they'll be spread pretty thin them four planes across them routes. <laughs> With only like uh, one or two flights per week to each. Like the flight that we're doing is only on a Saturday and a Wednesday, for example. So it does limit the days that you can fly quite a bit. Susie's asking, would I choose Doncaster? Of course I would, Susie B. I'd come and see you. <laughs> um, I used to use it a lot as an alternate when the rims were really, really strong. Um, I remember coming back from... Uh, Iceland in one of the storms and I called up the flight plan I said can you give us Doncaster and Auckland the guy laughed at me and said Doncaster International why do you want to go there I said because it's the only place in the northern hemisphere that's in the wind <laughs> yeah, he tapped away went so it is hang on new flight plan coming out that printed out and then all these other people are getting new flight plans why are we going to Doncaster because it's in the wind you know if you can't get to Manchester it's perfect so I'm really hoping that opens again um, Beverly's asking what time am I flying uh, I'm off to Malaga at, I think it's four o'clock to your Dreamliner on the roll as we welcome Michael Corrigan, the brand new airliner's live VIP to the community. Thank you, Michael. Oh, Lewis is on the EasyJet that's just landed. Hi, Lewis. Oh, no way. Give me a wave. <laughs> Roy saying the Turkish 330s delayed from yesterday morning. Wow. 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 Flexi wings. Yeah, nice that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is it the RVP at Dana? Yeah, it is. Uh, first bit of sun we've seen in uh, a long time, I think. Yeah. When it happens on a weekend, it's, uh, it means a lot. The kids are breaking up for school this time of year as well. Lewis is asking, am I able to do the old kite tack in the sim? And he's watching from his apartment. We used to be where the terminal was. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I've done it in my mates. Uh, I taught a guy to fly years ago. He's a really, really good mate. He's godfather to my oldest. And uh, when he had to stop flying through work, he built a 777 sim in his garage. And we used to do kai tack in there. It was quite good fun, you know, going in a 777. And it was, uh, but yeah, I've never done it. I, I, most of uh, the sims we go and haven't got it programmed in there anyway. Yeah, I think if uh, this weather trend continues with uh, rain and stuff like that, I don't think I'll be away for my birthday, so we might have to double book, Andy, when you're away. <laughs> Just <laughs> we'll uh, take a week off, I think. Just leave Matt and uh, Captain and Mr. <laughs> Bing Bong in charge. <laughs> They'll do it. They, yeah, they hey, know you know how to push all the buttons now. We'll be giving yeah, you yeah, a Yeah, yeah, okay. Come about. I'll come in. I'll come in with Mr. Bing Bong. We'll sit here and reminisce about the 7.5. Matt can do the camera. We'll have a good day. There you go. The choice is, do I... Yeah. Do I go in the rain and because it's my birthday or do I delay it a few weeks and go when it's dry? I think I think that's the better choice, isn't it? Uh, no worries, Lee. Yeah. Um, any YouTube issues, though, mate, you're best reaching out to YouTube. There's very, very little I can do to help you with YouTube stuff, mate. Um, unless you think it's something I can help with. But anything account-related, anything like that, we just don't have access to help you, I'm afraid. YouTube support's pretty good as well. Yeah. Better than Facebook. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they very kindly uh, demonetized our account for a week for absolutely no reason last week. It's good of them. That yeah. was nice of them, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, nice. And it turned out that a lot of our content they thought belonged to Big Jet TV. <laughs> Yeah. Slight difference of about 350 miles, mate. Yeah, yeah, because they see a plane and they go, oh, look, there's a plane on the screen. That's what Big Jet TV does. <laughs> <laughs> you copied him. <laughs> oh, no, you Carl. Someone did ask, Carl's from Dublin. He, uh, someone did ask, do I fly into Dublin? I haven't been in there in years. I did it in the 7.5 uh, a few times, but not with, not with the current lot. The 
the Ryanair just arriving in uh, from Prague. And down the end of the runway, we got about three aircraft, the first of which ATR on the way back out to Belfast. And that's followed by the uh, Ryanair to Shannon and the Turkish A330 out to Istanbul. And as you may have saw in shot as well, heading out to Exeter, the King Air 250 that arrived in earlier on. Exeter, they used to be the base of Flyby, didn't they, back in the day? Yeah, I do, uh, do miss Flyby. Oh, do I miss, I don't know if I miss Flyby, I just miss the dashes, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe they were going to ground right, but... Could be seeing that shades at Manchester again soon, then. Looks there. Oh, good. Yeah, sending them in. That'd be good. In April, that starts. A lot happening next month. And Matt, thank you very much for the 199 donation, saying happy birthday, Mum, for Tuesday, saying Matt hey. in the chat. Thank you, dude. Sorry I missed that. That was been, uh, as you say, flying past very quickly earlier on. Thank you very much for your support. Emirates A380 was actually pretty early today. Touchdown about 20 minutes before the scheduled arrival time. Crazy. One before that, we've seen depart Emirates flight 22, 21. Departed uh, pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 3.50. Oh, yeah. Next next to land, is that? Yeah. Um, there was a video on Mac Aviation's page yesterday, the 350, having a bit of an event on landing. It was a bit wobbly. Yeah, it was uh, getting yeah. blown about. It was really windy, though, yesterday, yeah. to be fair. It was like yesterday, was it? Yeah. Interesting angle. He, was, he must have been at the end of 2-3 right, was he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I've been there a few times. It's a nice spot. Yeah. The only issue is with it is for departures. Uh, the, the, it's good for narrow... Uh, sorry, for uh, anything smaller than like a heavy aircraft. You don't really see much of it. Yeah. So it's not very flat, this runway, is it? 2-3 right? No, it's a huge hump in it that you really don't realise unless you're down that end. Or if you're on the south side and you you know the planes disappear, don't they behind that yeah. uh, behind that hump? Uh, Chanax is Jet Two Matt, who use that call sign. Yep, it's kind of harking back to Channel Express. <laughs> yeah, they use a couple of different uh, registrations, uh, Jet Two as well. Um, I think the Chanax one they have Dart as well, DR for Dart Group uh, in the regs. Uh, and they have their own one as well, Jet 2 LS, I think. Jeff, new to the channel, really enjoying it. These guys obviously do a lot of work, and their voices are so enjoyable. We've had that compliment a few times mm -hmm. recently. Mm. I don't think my miss is a degree. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank um, you very much. Cheers for that. Mike's asking if he can contact me. Yeah, um, if you go on the Discord, uh, Airlines Live Discord, you can find me on there and just chuck us a personal message there for things that you can't put up on here. <laughs> Yeah, Discord's great. Make sure you all sign up and get involved in the Airliners Live Discord server. It's free for everybody. There's just a few extra little rooms for VIPs if you are a paying member. And just a polite note, please only direct message on Discord if you have got a genuine reason to do so. Please don't spam direct messages to users on there. Most of the uh, things you discuss can be used in the uh, chat rooms provided. Beautiful air airline of this. Got the uh, Saudi uh, seven eight seven ten coming in shortly, so that'll answer the question of uh, who was asking about seven eight tens earlier. Oh, there you go. Which uh, livery is that in? Is it? Uh, it's the old basic Cost, one. Yeah. yeah. Qatar oh, a... from uh, Doha just arriving in from uh, from Doha. A flight time of six hours forty-five minutes. BA three hundred and eighty going over just near the runway threshold. Is that what that is? Yeah. So I, I try and get a zoom in on that. I can see it. Uh, another one following in about ten minutes. Left a bit. <laughs> there it is. Centre screen. No, you got it. 
Must be pretty far away, that. So, uh, where is it? Let's have a look. Wow. British Airways. Flight radar 24 doing its thing again for me. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's over Glossop. Right. 34, 30, yeah, 33,700 and climbing. And that's on its way to Dallas. Great stuff. Oh, I bet you wish you on that one, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're we'll considering next time because Sam has never flown on an A380. Neither is Dakota, actually, believe oh, it or not. Okay. Um, so um, we're looking at going back. So, yeah, Dallas, Fort Worth via that. I believe Feza flew on this. Um, I think coming back, I think. Or going out, one of the two. I think it was going out when he went to Las Vegas. He went via uh, DFW BA. Yeah, it's all right, Lee. Yeah, if you need to message me, mate, drop me a message about it. It's fine. It's a huge airport, though, Dallas, Fort Worth. Just massive. That's not, that's, that's not Andy, that's us. That's I, went to, I went to put Andy you on the, the screen. Cattle, that's what it? happens when you're on the intro. Sorry, guys, there he is. That was a shot I tried to give to you, you know, while he was talking. Yeah. And instead, you got me and Mark like this. Hi! <laughs> Mark <laughs> taking pictures of me looking at screens. Yeah. Mark had a note. <laughs> Uh, 350 is a lovely looking bit of kit. Yeah, let's, let's get that in shot, shall oh, we? Sorry, John. There's a bit of warning there, Brown Bill. We all nearly saw our breakfast then. <laughs> <laughs> the zoomed in can we all like we were on the walks as <laughs> Barry and Emma, how are you doing? You alright? Welcome in. Oh hello Barry and Emma. Had a good laugh with them at the task fair. They're good yeah. them too, aren't they? Legends yeah. are. There's more me winding him up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, Stephen saying farewell to uh, wife Becca on a school trip to Iceland. Awesome. Oh, we have a great trip. No. Uh, oh, the Northern Lights were up last night, so she may get a good view of them. And oh, I, I was nice. getting it all pinged up my neck of the woods up north. It was uh, the red warning, so they were really bright last night. Wow. Such a shame we don't get them here. Looks like there's a bit of an inspection taking place on the uh, Virgin A330 there. Oh, yeah. Around the might APU, is it? Yeah. Exhaust. Might be an oil change, oil top up. <laughs> oh, good old Louise, just saying, I'm looking fresh. Uh, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 1080p, that's what's doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've, I've said I'm, I'm not good in 4K. When I was watching the video, pilot explained explaining the videos in 4K, I was sitting there like, yeah, me. But I'm not good in 4K. Drop yeah. it down to 720. Yeah, that uh, yeah. hides all the dual pilot incapacitation video. It was pretty cinematic, wasn't it? I was yeah. well impressed with it. Sony A1, wasn't it, on your, on your <laughs> face? Was it that what it was, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four grand camera. Is it? Oh, great. <laughs> Should have put it on uh, Sonny and Matt's and Henry's faces. They're far more photogenic. <laughs> Turkish 330 heading out. Very nice. There's a, that whiskey alpha that just tacked in. He's a really, really good lad on there. I'm sure he would have given us a big wave. Yeah. Um, excellent captain, excellent uh, first officer, and great crew on that one. But yeah, I'm so sure I recognised him as he went past. <laughs> <laughs> Another easy joke just about such down from Geneva this time. So when you see, the, um, you said there might be an oil, oil change or you know, oil top up on the Virgin there. Is that something that you'd request as a, as a pilot? Uh, normally the engineers pick it up on the uh, daily inspection they do, because the aircraft will tell you. Um, on the 320, if you get low oil on the APU, yeah. it can come up for a variety of reasons. It can come up, obviously, if you've got low oil, but also if, it, if it's not been shut down correctly, they, it can get confused. Um, but, the, you know, you get 10 hours of APU usage when it comes up with low oil level. And then once the engineers pick it up that night, they'll just get the, the, the steps up or the, you know, the, the cherry picker and just top it up. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a pain in the bum to do from <laughs> looking at it, but uh, it doesn't take long. I don't use a lot of oil, not as much as the engines. It's like a bit of speed save was only going on there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mm 
Is Matt Cam still alive? He certainly is. He's the one bringing you all the pictures of the apron. He's uh, he's probably worked out his own remote cam solution. He's probably sat in Greg's now with a remote control. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great lad on board there as well. He's just got not got married uh, not very long ago, so uh, yeah, nice. he's a good lad. Congrats. Reminds me of, uh, you know, Flight Focus, the chaps over at London Heathrow have that remote cam. <laughs> yeah, me and one of them. There's a Qatar 350 pulling in to the apron. Oh, that was it. Oh, that's that king here going up. up, up, up. I was going to say, that easy job on Sam very old. And the Iceland there. Uh, is also on the taxi out as well. And the Sun Express has just started pinging up as well, Matty, so uh, we should see that pushback shortly, which will be a nice catch. And I don't know if you can see no it, worries, um, but there is the BA380 off the end of the threshold of the runway going sort of northish bound, and to the south of it up in the airways, there is a My Cargo Airlines 747-400 oh, just see behind that. it. Yeah, yeah so the 380 is there. Yeah, yeah. seven four is there. I'll catch that after this uh, touchdown. I'll see him. Yeah. Next to land, jet to uh, A three twenty one Neo from Geneva. It's so stable that approach. Wow, kissing the runway. That was fantastic. That landed. It's not pretty gusty here, but it's definitely not as bad as it was no. earlier on. And we'll uh, just have a quick look at this Qatar 350 as it pulls on to stand with Matt. Beautiful. Slotting in alongside the Virgin A330. And Andy's picked up that 747 overhead as well. Good skill. Beautiful. One of your landings. Oh, yeah. To be fair, you did grease it yesterday. I'll give you that. Pretty far away, that uh, the zoom out. You'll see. see how far it is. It's just speck in the sky. Shows the powers of the uh, cameras we use here on Airliners Live. Massive zoom there. 36,000 feet. So six miles up. Just over... Just over... Uh, Duncan Fields at the moment, near Hyde. Is that Saudi next to land? 787 Dreamliner. Thank you all for the support today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the Super Sunday show on this quite nice day here in uh, Manchester. Saudi uh, usually produce the goods on the smooth landing front, so we'll see if that happens now. A high bar has been set by the Jet 2, A321 Neo before it. Hey, Sigrid, tuning in from Germany. Welcome to you. Touchdown there from the uh, Saudi. <laughs> 
Fried egg on switch. Loving the views of that 7-4 as well. Matt Cam picking it up for us for a short time there as well. And the info on screen brought to you by Flight Radar 24. Partnering with Airliners Live to bring you all of the information on your Super Sunday and midweek shows. Huge thanks to them. That's what I've been using to see all these stuff going over the top to tell you about <laughs> it. Um, Paulie's off. See you later, mate. And Sash is asking, do I fly to IB through a Mallorca a lot in summer or mainland Spain? Yes. El Buck and Spade routes are very, very popular, and I like them because they're reasonably short as well. Keeping an eye on the uh, Sun Express as well on Matcom because that's going to be pushing back soon. And as you can see, we've got a nice view of that. What's that? What's Matt spotted? He's seen something. He's trying to retract that 7-4 again. <laughs> ah, right. Mm. Barry's asking if my airline tries to avoid contrails as some other airlines do. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, it's just water vapour, so I don't... I, I don't know uh, whether it does much of, much of an effect on the environment anyway. I suppose it might reflect some sunlight or trap it, maybe, but... Um, the, the flight planning system is set up to burn the least amount of fuel possible. That's the best way um, to, to help the environment, and we fly as efficiently as possible. Um, one of the things that really helps is doing a thing called a constant descent approach, so that you're constantly doing a descent. You don't level off and the engines don't power up, so you try and do those as, as much as possible. But it's all these little things that, that help and you know save fuel. What about noise? Is that more just based off restrictions of airports? You've got to... Yeah, I mean, again, the, the constant, you're monitored here. Constant descent approach is coming below 5,000 feet. Right. So it is to also do with noise because, obviously, if you fly straight and level with gear and flap out, then the engines are going to spool up and be quite noisy. So if you can bring it in in a shallow descent using vertical speed, I might. I, I am going to do a write-up for the Flight Lines magazine for the VIPs at some point um, about flying a descent and how to do it, because in the sim, obviously, you program your route in, the aircraft does it in real life, it doesn't work like that, because air traffic will take you off and give you headings, give you shortcuts. So you've got to constantly be doing your sums in your head, your three times table, so 10,000 feet, 10 times three, 30 miles, I need 30 miles plus five to slow down, I need 35 miles. And I know if they start cutting me in, and you know I can see I'm getting less miles, I need to get the descent on. And below 5,000 feet, you'll be constantly adjusting it to try and keep it descending. You don't want to be flying straight and level. Beautiful shot of Saudi taxiing past here at the runway visitor park. Links will be in the chat if you want to come down and enjoy these views for yourself, especially as we go into the summer months. It's an awesome place to come and enjoy your day out. And it's yeah. also the home of Airliners Live as well. So we've got a couple of... Um Flight Radar 24 tags as well, so if anyone's at the RVP wants to come and say hello, we can uh, potentially provide you with one of them. And Lufthansa A319 just arrived in from Frankfurt. Mike's asking how many flights am I allowed to do a day? It depends. Um, it's not limited on the amount of flights you do, it's the amount of how many hours you can work. The most I've done in the past is six uh, when I was on the 737. Um, Wow. But the more you do, the less hours you can work. So, you know, it was like, I, I think it was Bristol and back, Belfast and back, Bristol and back. Um, but uh, normally we do two or four a day. Um, I don't think there's any any more than that at the moment. One thing I learned from that video that you did was also the time of day that you start flying. That's yes. a factor, isn't it? Yes, because we did a Pilot Explains video on how many hours can work. And that was quite a good one. And, uh, it, you know, we, we talked about it, that, yeah, if you say you start at 6 o'clock in the morning, you're doing four flights, you can do, I mean, it used to be 10 hours 45. And if you start at lunchtime and you do two hours, you can do 12 hours 15. Obviously, that, that's changed slightly now, but it depends on how many flights and what time of day you start. Scott's asking, do I prefer early, early or late? Do we get night stops or loan to other bases? Yeah, I prefer uh, late. Um, I'm actually on a bespoke roster at the moment where I don't have to do earlys. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you'll, you'll get sent out to other bases. Um, Liverpool's been very short recently. There's a lot of people off sick. So I had a friend of mine who's based at Gatwick, kept getting sent up to Liverpool to work. Oh, wow. Mad Mick's going to be visiting the RVP on Wednesday. Long-time lurker in the channel. Well, welcome in, mate. Thanks for getting involved in the chat as well. As this Iceland uh, rotates off, we are watching 
periodically the uh, Sun Express pushback, which I think will give full coverage to on Matt Cam now. Nice. And that's uh, catching a beautiful shot. This is the power of the Matt Cam location, guys. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. What an awesome view that is. Unique to Airliners Live here on your Super Sunday shows. Matt Cam, the legend. He is. Yeah. Mm. Captain Aviation is asking what av uh, airline and plane do I fly? We don't say what airline I fly through because it's top secret. You'll work it out. Mm. Uh, at the moment, I fly A319 320s. I used to fly the 73 and the 757. I've noticed a lot of pilots doing that, you know, like, especially on these days on social media. They've, they've really clamped down on, I think, because you're representing the brand almost, you know, as a pilot, you're in control of the plane. You're, you're kind of like the face of the, the airline in, in an essence, aren't you? And, you know, when you're online and things, people can take things out of context. Um, I've seen a great ordeal of, like, people represent almost like ambassadors of an airline. They're a pilot for it. And maybe their account gets hacked as well, like their social media, and then that results in a lot of uh, not good stuff happening. So I think people, pilots and things are always very cautious, aren't you? Of, yeah. Saying things like Thanks for tuning in, Kevin. Hope it goes well, mate. Thanks for being with us today. There's a message here from uh, Austin. Um, hello, Mark. Looking forward to flying with you soon. He was the FO on one of the flights that just come in that I was talking about. Really good lad. I love flying with him. He's an absolutely brilliant lad. He's come up from Gatwick. Um, excellent pilot. And he's in the know, as we call it, as well. I love flying with him. We always have a good day out. Austin nice. is his name. That's a cool yeah, name. Yeah, he's, he's cool. He's such a cool lad. He's, yeah. I love flying with him. And that's going to be pushed all the way back the Sun Express, just so that they can make the right-hand turn. Uh, to taxi out. So, how often do you fly with the same crew? Like, because uh, it must be a, you know, as many airlines. There's probably a lot of staff, a lot of pilots. Yeah, I think there's about 150 captains and 140, 150 first officers. So yeah. it chops and changes. I mean, the last two flights I've done have been with the same lad. Another lady, good lady, who's come up from Gatwick. Mm. Um, I'm flying with a lad today. The last time I flew with him was the Storm Agnes one, where you lot all did a raid on Mac Aviation's uh, stream, and I was coming in, the Euro wings in front, had gone around twice and gone back to Dusseldorf, and thank God we got in. Yeah. Um, he's a fantastic first officer, a big, great captain. He's also, when I first came to Manchester, I had a, a day from hell with this same first officer. He was great. But we had problems, tech problems, cargo doors wouldn't shut, unruly passengers. And I took photos of it all. And when I used to do um, uh, command seminars for first officers who want to become captains, I used to set this day as a challenge to them. You know, this was, a, a, right, what would you do now? Who needs to know what? Who do you need to talk to? All right, brilliant. They'd discuss it. OK, great. And then what now? What would you do now? And then this has happened. Now what would you do? And it was a really, really good one. But th this guy I'm flying with today is fantastic as well. I suppose you have them in any industry, don't you? Just yeah. de days where everything that could go wrong does, you know, and you've just it's got to on a Sunday at about nine o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Amy's saying, hi, Austin. Sorry about the crew food. Yeah, <laughs> I've been putting pictures up of the crew food on the Rate My Scran page. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, last night's one uh, was, was quite impressive. I think uh, Amy said it was possibly the worst one ever. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. So we fly to Mike Tango mm. in from Toulouse. You can only lose in Toulouse. It'll be a distant, uh, decent destination after plane spotting to lose. I'm sure you get plenty of uh, Airbus test flights and whatnot. Yeah. New, new equipment's being used. And as that aircraft rolls out, Lufthansa A319 on the taxi in on Matcam Smith. That's the one we just saw touch down on the runway cam here at the RVP. Another nice shot of this one as it makes the right turn onto stand. Is Matt still on the phone, is he? I think so. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Hello, mate. Did, did you have enough time to go uh, Greg's in the end or were you in too much of a rush? Always oh, got time for Greg's mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were rushing, a, rushing a little bit as well. Have you tried the new menu yet? <laughs> no, you? because you can't Not yet. get it. Well, we, ah, Greg ah, doesn't do it. Yet. See, well, you got to live up where Greg's is based, haven't you? Mm. You know, it's, they got some really good stuff coming out. It's like chicken burgers and yeah. stuff. Yeah, everything. But they said, I said to the lady, and I uh, said, "Oh, when are you getting a new menu?" So she says, "Oh, we can do it." But they've just not added it to our tills yet. 
we went out the other day a couple of weeks ago the family went out into the newcastle city centre and in the, the big uh, shop phoenix it's a very posh shop in christmas they always do a big window display they've actually got a greg's inside upstairs like a proper restaurant oh, nice. yeah you can go up there it's 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 really posh really nice staff there were fantastic some young girl she's absolutely working her little two shop and we said to her at the end i went up to her, i said you know i'm so impressed with you you're so friendly when you serve us and you've not stopped all day and she started blushing oh i'm so embarrassed no you were fantastic it's so nice to see nice um, hey bram a brand new first class vip wow thank you very much for that welcome in welcome to vip here on airliners live you're supporting the channel with your monthly membership thank you very much for that let's get some waves in the chat brand new vip yeah, I've seen that Greg's had a big system uh, outage, didn't they? And they couldn't take card payments. Yeah, with him. Yeah. yeah, we uh, we called in sick that day, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, I blame you. <laughs> Got on strike. Yeah. Imagine if it happened on a Sunday. That was oh, right. Poor Matt cancel Cam it. Yeah. Cancel it. Yeah. No Matt Cam Smith today, folks. <laughs> Jimmy Jetty saying was it easy to change from seven five to Airbus. Um, well, I went from the seven five to the seven three, and then the Airbus. It was a big culture shock going from the seven five to the seven three because the seven five is absolutely wonderful. And the 73, in my opinion, isn't. <laughs> I didn't like flying it at all. And then from the 73, the Airbus it is. It's a big. It is. It's a big culture change because the whole philosophy from Airbus is completely different to Boeing. Yeah. Um, the flight management computers not, nowhere near as good as the Boeing one. I don't think it's very. It's quite complicated. And the aircraft itself is really, really complicated. It's yeah. far too complicated for what we use it for. They did, Sasha. Yeah, they had a technical problem, and that also extended out to like Sainsbury's and Tesco's as well. It was uh, oh right, a few places had it. Yeah, that's easy. Uh, just arrived in from Nice, oh. and uh, we've also got a Virgin A330 pushed back for Bridgetown. Um, so we'll be seeing that depart very soon. Um, Caroline's saying she's looking forward to flying with uh, my, my airline to uh, first time in June to Malta. So that'd be good. I hope I'm doing that one because I've got a really interesting uh, PA to, that I gave last night. I was talking about it earlier. I got a round of applause for it. But yeah, to give a load of history about St. Paul and St. Paul's Bay. And if you get a chance to visit St. Paul's Bay, do go there because it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely. And this Virgin Atlantic A330 will most likely be our final departure for today. And we are keeping our eyes open for the Egypt Air A321 as well, which is uh, a big favourite of the channel. And that's uh, on the downwind or a bit of a skew if downwind into Manchester. So that should be with us very soon. Excited to see that on uh, right. a sunny day for a change. Yeah, that'll be nice. A little biz jet rolling on the runway now. Wow. That's nice, yeah, it's on its way to Chambry. <laughs> Enjoy that one. Very posh. <laughs> Glad I don't have to go there anymore. Let's, have a look. Let's get these back on. I know I said it earlier on, but this touchscreen has changed my life down here. <laughs> this makes a world of difference. I think my mum used to have a touchscreen laptop. Yeah. The problem was, right, imagine a laptop, right, when you got like fingerprints and stuff on it, it's annoying. But that always had them on, it was always covered with them because it was just like. <laughs> designed for that yeah it's made uh, integrating flight radar with the streams much much easier which is what we need it needs to be intuitive and quick I'm excited to watch the stream back it, it's always nice watching these back because the full presentation of all the cameras just it's pretty sublime it, it's, yeah. it flows so nicely versus you know just the intricate parts that we're all putting in it all it all gets brought together into the stream that you guys see at home. But each one of us here, it's a real team effort. We're all uh, doing our little bit to bring you these shows, and we won't be able to do it without your support. So thank you very much, everybody. Exactly. Uh, it's a busy week this week. I think we've got like three days of streaming um, midweek. Yep. Uh, Wednesday might be live Thursday morning for a short show. And then I believe Matt is live on Friday with a, a special guest as well. My birthday on Friday as well. Oh, right. But it's, uh, Are you the special I, I'm guest? I'm not the special <laughs> guest. No. Birthday boy. May, may you invite me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on a Sunday we could do a little bit of a 
you know, a, a belated birthday no, special. Yeah, if I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first, first sight of sun, mate. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> Ian's asking, do they actually have a downwind leg at Manchester? Yes, they do. Um, normally, you, if you come in from yeah, Belfast, the Isle of Man, or off the Mersey hold, um, you're vectored sort of on a downwind leg. Um, to the south, sometimes you might. It doesn't happen that often, but they might pick you off early and bring you in. Cheers, Clap. Glad you've uh, enjoyed the stream today. We've uh, really enjoyed it. We are really enjoying our Super Sunday shows at the minute. It's always nice to have Mark on as well. I do appreciate you, Mark, for yeah, joining us. Thanks People really love it. Then props catching the sun as well on the departure out. That's cool. Getting We're going to head him back out to New Key. Decent climb, mate, as well. That's hard to track. <laughs> it's, all, it's above our heads. <laughs> Great stuff. And there's our finale on the taxi out, Virgin Atlantic A330. Beautiful. Uh, Scottish Linda, uh, we always stream um, the same time regardless of what happens with the clocks. So, yeah, um, yeah, expect to see us at 9am on Sunday. Um, and it's quite cool because uh, it kind of shuffles up the movements and stuff. I can't remember off the top of my head, I'm sure people in the chat might remember, like, uh, for example, the A380, for example, that'll be changed. I think it's an hour later, I think. That's right. So I think the A380 will be arriving at the end of our shows Yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Um, That'd be good, which yeah. is Which is good. Yeah, which be, is good. Be around, around about now, it'll be arriving. So Yeah, it'll be a perfect end to the streams. And the one before will be departing an hour later. So as we go live, we'll be waiting for that, seeing it get turned around. And if it's running particularly late, we won't even see it arrive at the start of the show. So Yeah, and don't forget, as we go into the summer months as well, folks, um, we do look to switch our midweek shows to evenings as well, mm. which I'm really looking forward to. That's only about just over two months away, that is now. Uh, in June, we normally do that. <laughs> and, um, yes, because that's uh, when the RVP... Because uh, I think every month from now, they're pushing their opening time, uh, or the closing time in the evening, back an hour yeah so it's gone from like 4 p.m you know five six seven and eventually in june it's 8 p.m so uh that means that we can do a live show till about half seven in the evening and yeah, then obviously we we, we we jot off then yeah i can't wait for those evening shows really really looking forward to them and of course we always sponsored by la flights over and our, our mates over in lax one more plane mm. Q8 A330 Neo has just pushed back, so we'll uh, we'll make that our one more plane for today. Awesome. And uh, here's our Egypt Air A321. And thanks for all the birthday messages for Friday as well, guys. Hey. Cheers, Brody. Good to see you too, mate. Cheers, Greg. Thank you, mate. Oh, Tina's asking, will I have a hot dog? Yeah, I haven't had one yet. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. That's how I do for time. They're pretty spectacular. Uh. That's right, because you're going to be after, you're gonna have to jot off soon, aren't you, for the... Uh, got a flight to catch. I've got <laughs> a little while. I've got to go and see a uh, little mate over in uh, the cafe and give yeah. her a bag of sweets and see Tom and Anne and uh, have a chat, and then I'll uh, scoot off. Leave us with a hyper child. Yeah, <laughs> I think she needs the energy, to be honest. <laughs> how, how busy she's been. We've got a painting of you knocking down walls. <laughs> yes. Destroying a house. <laughs> <laughs> be worth it when it's done. I have to undestroy it now. You a fan of this plane, Mark? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's a nice colour scheme. Egypt Air. It is nice. Yeah. 321 Neo. I think it's been slightly topped here on the channel by the uh, Royal Jordanian. Yeah, that is a nice scheme, isn't it? I mean, I've had that Beautiful. same scheme for donkey's years. Yeah. Like I said last week, you know, I used to see it on the Tri-Stars and the A310s. It looks spectacular on those, but, yeah, it's... Uh, it We're really nice. lucky as well, because quite a few of the newer airlines that are looking to start up in the next few months are all operating on Sundays as well. Yeah. Within our show schedule, which is great for us. Yeah, it, it seems like this is the year when they're really cranking up the, the pace of new airlines, you know. The last few years, it's been a little bit underwhelming, should we say? You know, we've had the odd new airline, Gulf Air, um, and it's an Express, relatively new. Um, Egypt Air, of course, one of the newest. 
Shame we've got nowhere to park them, but you know. <laughs> yeah. That, well, that's it, yeah. I mean, we seen it earlier in the show, didn't we? Like, there was a bit of a queue to get back onto the terminal. Yeah. And especially T2 as well, for example. And, and I, I mean, you know T1 more than us. They do get quite full, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, occasionally you'll end up parked up and waiting for a stand. And, uh... It's only, only going to get worse because, you know, it's going to get busier, but also they're doing more construction work, aren't they? Hopefully this new pier at Terminal 2 will help alleviate some of the... Uh, Issues. Yeah, I said so the other time, one of the cabin crew, used to, he was involved in the consultation for it, and um, he was saying that they were planning on putting more more piers in, and they've actually cut down on the amount of piers, so I don't know where they're going to park all the aircraft now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Corundon next in. Mm. Right, nice. I do love that uh, Corundon 747. They've got it. Uh, I'm just saying skip all out. Always thought for some reason that was a corridor, but it's not. It was a it was a um, KLM seven four seven that uh, flew in. Uh, Shanae, if you look around the cockpit windows, there's basically a, a thick black border around them, so you'll uh, you won't be able to unsee it now. And it's uh, something to do with diverting heat away from the windows. So yeah, um, you'll notice it. So uh, most aircraft don't have it. However, the newer Airbuses tend to have this uh, it looks like a, a, a Zorro mask <laughs> really if you've nice. ever seen Zorro you, you do get a lot of delamination on the windscreen so they're, they're nine panes thick normally and uh, the one I was in last night you, you get delamination and then what happens is the engineers measure it make sure it's within limits then draw on a sharpie a black line around it and date it and then you can watch it how it how it moves oh. and if it's if it gets past a certain limit then the windscreen has to be replaced but um, I think with this mask, it helps cut down on that because you haven't got... You've got to imagine the outside of the aircraft is in you know, sometimes minus 70 degrees and you've got a windscreen that's heated quite quite warm and it's warm to the touch. So there's a, there's a big difference and it, I think it just dissipates that slightly. I'm surprised the Concorde never had that as well because I know, um, you know, it, there was a um, Concorde's uh, pilot uh, who spoke at the... Uh, you know the anniversary gala they did a couple of months ago back in October, saying that you used to touch the, the flight deck windows mid-flight in a Concorde and it burn your hands. It was yeah. that hot. I think that, that probably I would have thought that would be more down to the friction of the speed that you're going rather than the actual yeah. heating elements. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the whole aircraft used to stretch, didn't it? And there's one of them has got the engine flight engineer's hat stuffed in the panel because when it stretched, he put the hat in the panel and then waited for it to contract and trapped his hat there and it's stuck there. You know until they if they ever dismantle it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that, that would be more that. But our ones actually have eight and elements. I, I did it in the, in the latest, uh, the next flight lines for the uh, newsletter. I talked to, I'm talking about ice, ice baby and anti-ice protection. And there's a bit in there about how they heat the windscreens. It not only stops ice forming, but it also makes them a little bit flexible. So should you hit a bird on takeoff, it's less likely to go, th you know, damage the windscreen. It just, you know, the windscreen's got a little bit of give in to it. And there's the Egypt uh, pulling up. On to stand on Matt Cam Smith and also the uh, Kuwait 330. Our final movement today has uh, started its taxi out. And it's busy end to the show today. You've been to like Munich or anything, Mark, where they have them big de icing operations. Uh, I, I know a couple of uh, airports over in Europe have them, you know, where it gets really cold. And whereas here at Manchester, it's much more of a smaller operation, isn't it? De icing the aircraft. You might have to uh, repeat that. Sorry, me and Mark was having a quick chat off mic about right. the 380 took his headset off. <laughs> Sorry, I was just asking if uh, you ever went to one of them airports where they have sort of big de-icing operations, you know, they might have a de-icing yeah. card. Yeah, uh, Munich, I've done de -ice, remote de-icing there. That's quite cool. So you drive up on, I've done that a few times, you drive up onto the, you know, the de-icing rig yep. and there's two trucks either side, set your par brake, you know, get talk to them on box two. Let them know, you know, engines running and weather radar off, whatever, and uh, they'd start the de-icing. They do, they do the full de-ice. Tell them, you know, tell them what you want. I want spot de-icing. I want everything done. You know, they do it. <laughs> full wax wash. Oh you know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to top up the levels, of boys, while you're there. And then you'd get either a printout. They tell you what they've done. You'd write that in the tech log. Um, configure the aircraft, and off you go. It's it's very slick, and very, we've actually got them here. Um, I'll be out showing Martin. I can't show you no. guys. Uh, where is it? They've got these de-icing pads, and of course, they've got great names for them. They've got de-icing pad Iceman, 
And then you've got the ice you got impact goose. goose. Like, yeah, and oh, Maverick nice. somewhere as well. Yeah, there's goose. Uh, around the, the corner, I think. Yeah, there's Maverick up yeah. there on stand 80 and 2 3. What well, honestly, he thinks it's up. Um, but yeah, you, uh, you've got them here now. I don't think they. Uh, I, I, I was involved in the trial about five years ago when they started trialling this to see what if it would work. And um, got the ice on it, all worked all right, and off we went. Because you've got, again, in the. I um, can't remember where we talked about it, but uh, we've talked about it before. You get these things called hold, hold over time. So you get the aircraft de iced and anti iced and sprayed with type 1, type 4, whatever. And then you have to look in at what sort of precipitation you've got and look on a chart of what fluid they've used, and it gives you how long it's effective for. So type 4, you know, say it's minus 3 and you've got light snow, it's probably good for 1 hour 40 minutes. If you've got heavy, or if you've got free, heavy freezing rain and it's, say, minus 10, you could have, some, like, 15 minutes to take off, so it's a good wow. idea to have it quite near the runway. Yeah. And you've got, to, you've got to keep an eye on it, you know, and if, it's, you know, if you think it's breaking down, you're going to have to go down the cabin, have a look at the wings and check the nose and make sure that that de-icing fluid is working because you really don't want ice on the wings um, when you go to take off. It, it's, it's a really, really big deal. So we're really, really keen on getting rid of it all. Here's the Corindon next to uh, pull on to stand on uh, Matt Cam Smith. And there we also saw taxiing in the background the uh, Q8 330 Neo. We do have a Pegasus landing, but we'll uh, we'll stick with this Corindon, I think, because this may be the last aircraft that pulls on to stand for us today. The wind has really died down. It went from really gusty, heavy winds to just, just nothing now, hasn't it? Barely anything, yeah. It's going to be a naughty crosswind tomorrow as well. They're talking about 140 gusting 25 or something like that. That's going to be fairly unpleasant. Mm. You flying yesterday, were you, you say? Uh, I was yesterday, yeah. It's, it, it, it's tomorrow. It's going to be 140 gusts and 25. I was, I was Malta yesterday. It was when I came in at land. It was 31018 gusting 28, I think it was. Right. That was boring. <laughs> yeah, oh. the car park's really busy today at the RVP. They've got a that. load of uh, sports cars up on the display over there as well. They were all parking up when I came in. Oh, smart. Yeah, there's a nice Ferrari and a load of TVRs and all sorts all parking up. Right. Quite, quite good. Cool. But park next to mine, did they? Yeah. Not yeah. Shit out. yeah, I got told to park in the corner, so just put that old knacker away from the <laughs> sports car, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something we don't want any of the dirt falling off onto the sports cars. <laughs> right, okay. Off I go. Here's a mask for you, Sinead. Yeah, really uh, Can you see that defined. black border around the windows, Sinead? There's an emote for it as that's well. That's what we're talking about. There you go. You'll see it really clearly now. Look. And that takes heat away from the windows. It also looks really cool as well. Oh, let's yes. be honest. Really cool. Especially on the Pegasus planes. I don't know why. Probably because it's just such a simple livery that just works well. Yeah, really smart. Was Matt flying the Chinook last night? No way, I need to watch that. Walker Walker. Yeah. The only aircraft that can have a mid air collision with itself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one, one thing that Sam got sent as well, um, received at the post of the day, was a 50 years uh, gazelle commemorative coin. Ooh, what happened one? And um, she got sent it as like a token of, um, like a thank you, basically. That's really cool. Um, from the actual um, army centre. Mm -hmm. Not crazy. <laughs> I taught a lad to fly years ago who's, um, I think he was a sergeant in the, uh, in the in the forces, and he was at a military base years ago where they, this Chinook did have a mid-air collision with itself. It was taxiing for takeoff. And the blades, they, they had these tolerances for it. And it, uh, it was about to go in the hangar to have them redone. It wasn't out, you know, it wasn't that bad. But it wandered. And the blades collided with each other. And he said that, you know, these bits of blades went flying. And one of them ended up wedged in the hangar. The concrete, you know, it was a concrete hammer designed to take, you know, a bomb going off. And this part of the Chinook blade went in, in the concrete. It was buried in there. As far as I know, it's still in there. But he said it made a hell of a mess. Wow. 
haven't had that, uh, any military uh, stuff. Uh, well, we've not caught any a Barton aerodrome for a little while. Especially, uh, yeah, Chinooks. Obviously not the Gazelles, because they're all retired now. Get the Barton budgie, though. I mean, you know. mm, that's all you need. <laughs> Helimeds for days. I gather there's this uh, old Land Rover that goes around on two wheels a lot of the time. It goes around <laughs> corners, like... Yeah, time response exercise, apparently. Is that what it is? Yeah. is it? That's, yeah. what, that's what they call it. It's not just your last being a hooligan, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just looking a bit closer into the uh, into the masks, um, Airbus was saying that um, it harmonises the thermal condition of the wi sensitive window area, basically. Yeah. So it means it won't cool down and speed up as fast around the window. Ah, there you go. And uh, looking at simple flying, they say uh, the black colour adjusts better to the temperatures surrounding the aircraft and uh, planes routinely undergo rapid temperature changes, taking off from hot airports in the cold atmosphere and all the parts must adjust to this change so uh, yeah that that mask just basically it'll it'll attract the hot, the heat away and it'll also retain the heat when it needs to as well so i'm going to smooth out that change i right. hazard a guess that that's uh, protected by airbus that almost like painted today i assume because you don't see that on boeing's do you no i've not seen it Maybe Boeing's don't have the same issues. Maybe because Airbus have bigger windows as well. Maybe it's more yeah. of an issue. Yeah. Seven three windows are poxy little things, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And Stephen, uh, bidding farewell to Becca on the school trip to Iceland that we uh, caught departing. Thank you very much, Stephen, for your very kind donation. And uh, Bram, a brand new airliners live first class member. So let's get some welcomes in the chat for Bram, guys. And uh, Kenneth White uh, returning for 17 months, saying, well done, guys, and thanks for all the info. Cheers, Kenneth, and thanks for your long-term support to the channel as well. And uh, as you saw, taxiing out the Q8330neo, our final movement for today, is uh, just heading down to uh, Juliet 1. That's following a Ryanair flight out to, uh, to Poland. And there's also a uh, Ryanair on the runway, ready to go, out to Pisa. And then uh, number three to depart will be our 330 Neil on the way to Kuwait City. Ian's got a good one. He's found out a lesson on Thursday that all the nines doesn't necessarily mean good visibility. Um, when you have your metals, your met actual reports, uh, visibility is given in metres, kilometres, whatever. So, you know, if you've got 5k, you've got 5,000 metres. If you've got, if it says 9999, they call it all the nines. And uh, that's 10 kilometres or more. So you could have 10.1 kilometres or 10 kilometres even. And that's not a long way to see. Mm. And, you know, some private pilots get a little bit thrown. You know, you can sort of look out the window and think, hang on, it's a bit murky out there. Oh, it's 10k or more. And off they go. And then they realise they can't see their hand in front of their face. They've got to come back. Wow. <laughs> well, I think kilometres are not nautical miles. Because that would oh, that'd be, that'd be more useful if you're on, like, final approach, for example. Yeah. You can... I had a mayor when I used to teach air law because you've got, uh, you know, you've got metres, you've got kilometres, you've got feet, you've got nautical miles, you've got knots, yeah. you know. And, it, you, yeah. and then you fly to China or Russia. Or Russia and you're yeah. in metres, yeah, 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 you know. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the seven thread a really good push button. It's metres and it gives you actual height in metres. It gives you the metres above it. Mm. And that gives you three times table for your descent. So you didn't have to think about your descent, just look at the number. It was great. And the, yeah. the Airbus has got it, but it shows you what you're actually dialed in on the MCP. So it doesn't help you. You've got to go back to doing your three times table. And the 7.5 didn't have either. So you had to have a chart out. And you're pulling this chart out and you're like, oh, yeah, the flight level 11,100 metres. And you're like, oh, what's that? 36,200. And you're dialing that in and you're, oh, it's a night. You all had to double check it to make sure you didn't make an error or a mistake. Sasha, thank you very much for your donation coming into the stream as well, supporting the channel today. Thanks a lot. Um, without going too much into it, Barry, unfortunately the thing, the idea we had that we were working together on ended up on pretty much all of the live streams. They, they decided to distribute it out to everybody, so we uh, we briefly moved away. Sorry, we quickly moved away from that. Yeah. I'm loving this uh, flight radar 24 integration. It's 
It good. works really well. Really yeah, good, isn't great. it? And Bev, thank you so much, gifting an airliner's live membership. And that's gone to Deborah Malone. There you go. Thank you very much, Bevs. Really appreciate that. We have all the nines today, it looks like. I mean, the visibility, oh, yeah. is, visibility is great. Oh, Luke, just put the, the, the uh, actual up. Yeah, it's uh, 300 at 14, all the nines scattered at 3,100, temperature 10, G.2, QNH 1 0 1 0. <laughs> On the Airbus, do you get the uh, the meta through the flight computer, or do you have to tune in to the ISIS? Or? Uh, you can, if if the uh, CPDLC and the the ACARS is working, you dial, you type in what you want. Is that you can get the ATIS, digital ATIS comes out, which tells you runway and uh, what approach to expect. Gives you a bit more information. It's more useful, and then you can just get generic weathers for certain airports. So you can just put in the weathers. Um, if that's not working, you can listen in on box two to VHF Volmet or the ATIS. And, you know, Malta hasn't got a digital ATIS. So we had to use the radio to listen once we got a bit closer. And then also, I used to use this around Africa a lot. You use HF and there's HF Volmet. And you dial in on the high frequency radio that's sent from London. And you bounce the radio waves off the ionosphere. And you can listen in to the radios, uh, to the uh, weathers of certain airports. Now, they only happen at certain times during the hour. I seem to remember, I think Gatwick was like 20 past and 40 past. So you had to be on the ball ready to get it. And if you've missed it, then, you know, you, you, you've, got, <laughs> you've got to wait half hour before it comes around <laughs> again. So it was a right pain. But, yeah, as long as the it's A-cars like the is forecast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah. a nightmare. Oh, but, um, when you used to phone up that, was it one, two, three or something? It would give you the, uh, the current time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, 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 what you had to dial for that? Anyone, anyone remember that? I'll tell you what I have got. I've got the phone numbers for some 80s. I've got Manchester's, Bristol's, yeah. Edinburgh's, uh, Teesside, Newcastle, and Stansted's. Turn the flash on the old lines there as well. Yeah, nice one. Ah, oh, good wave there. Love, love, love that. Who's in there? But yeah, it's quite good. When you guys are on and the weather's poo, what I like to do is phone up the ATIS. Yeah. Um, so I can give you a, a, a fairly you know, reasonable, up to date, what it's actually doing, sort of thing. Yeah. I believe Flight Radar 24 as well is a feature where you click on the airport. Uh, and under the overview of the airport, it will tell you the uh, an up-to-date ATIS as well. Nice. Uh, a METAR, rather. The uh, first off on that plane, he's the Welsh lad I was talking about. It does the really good Twin Town impressions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's funny. He's good at Yeah, there it is. It uh, gives you a bit of information. 300 oh, yeah. at 14. Cloudy, 10 degrees. 1010. Zero, one, zero. On the uh, Hector Pascals. It even gives you the earlier ones as well, which is quite... I like that, because I like to look back and see what it was when I landed. Like, oh, why was it so bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it seems to... Uh, oh, it is good. Quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, lovely. Good bit of kit, that, isn't it, that flight radar? Yeah, it's nice. And uh, as you can see, waiting down... The runway is our final movement for today, the Q8A330neo. We saw this arrive earlier on in the show, which is absolutely fantastic. Really nice to see these back. They've been operating the uh, 20 neo for a little while. And uh, big thanks to Matt Cam Smith as well for his job up on the uh, apron cam today, capturing this uh, Air Lingus under tow as well. Appreciate you, Matt. Cheers, Matt. No, good thing, good thing about uh, Flight Radar 24 is Chris over there has been really, really good. Top, top draw guy. Um, obviously, he was on the show a couple of weeks ago as well. And he shares a lot of the aspirations of, of the integration, you know, the partnership. Uh, some of the ideas that we've thrown at him, and he's given some good ideas to us. So do expect more in the future as well. Like, this is just the early stages of the Flight Radar 24 partnership. Yeah, we got Matt back. I was just saying, well done, mate. Good show today. Look, plenty of movements up there today as well. Nice for me. It's been pretty busy, hasn't it? I'm really glad. good. Yeah, really good. Super stable as well. It's been uh, it's been great. Ah, um, mega. That's great. That's Love great it. news. Awesome. Joanna was asking, is uh, your man from Flight Radar coming back on at some point soon? I'm sitting here like, oh, am I not good enough for you anymore? You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's more interested than me. <laughs> yeah, I said he's... Uh, I mean, I think uh, sometime in the summer, potentially, would be a, a good time. Uh, I mean, the weather was pretty nice when he was on, uh, especially here in the tower. But, uh, yeah, in the summer would be nice. Oh, fingers crossed, Barry. Fingers crossed, mate. She doesn't need an oper another operation. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful shot of this uh, Aer Lingus. Don't worry, the uh, crate is only just lining up on the runway. We're keeping an eye on it. But a beautiful shot at this 3.30 there. And uh, we'll update you next week with regards to show schedule and things, guys. Um, to be completely honest with you, uh, it's supposed to be raining on my birthday at the moment. Uh, so if it's raining, me and Jem won't be going away. Uh, however, uh, if that changes, we will be. Um, so uh, it's kind of a bit up in arms at the moment. But I will uh, I'll update you as soon as we uh, as soon as we can. But obviously, when you're holidaying in the UK, you kind of just have to <laughs> give it as long as you can for the weather to improve. So we will see. We will see. Amy Staffness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the current Mrs. L might disagree with Amy Staff and us because she has to <laughs> live with it every day. But there you are. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for tuning in today, though, folks. Back live on Wednesday here at Manchester Airport. I believe the the should be a simulate show tomorrow evening. I think, I think he has even scheduled it this time as well. So. Okay. <laughs> tomorrow from 6 p.m. And here we go. 3.30 Neo on the roll. Let's have a listen to this. Just sprung up. Absolutely mega departure. That was great. Power of them engines. Nuts. And there you go, folks. Absolutely incredible departure to wrap up what's been an incredible show as well. A huge thanks to everyone tuning in. And uh, I know uh, we've had a huge amount of support on today's show as well. So a massive, massive thank you to everybody who's uh, thrown in support. Just making sure we've not missed any before we wrap up today's show. But uh, no, you've all been absolutely amazing today. Thank you so much, guys, for the uh, very generous support. And uh, well done to Andy up on the roof as well, bringing you all of the aviation action. Let's get some loves again in the chat for Joanna, who put in 50 gifted memberships earlier on as well. An incredible amount of support. And uh, thank you very much to Mr. Captain Mark for Thanks coming on the show today. We'll get Mr. Matt Cam Smith on for a wave as well. He's still following that Q8 for you guys. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, where did you say you're, uh, you're off to today, Mark? Oh, I'm off to Malaga uh, a bit later. So I'll be waving at uh, all the fans on the other side as we taxi out. Nice. And what's your plans, Andy, for uh, today, mate? I don't even know. We'll see. A lot of things need to be done. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So no roast, get, no roast for you then? Oh, no. Um, get my hands not dirty. for you, Mark, either. No, you? definitely not. I might get a hot dog in a minute if there's any left. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike, Matt, if you want to give us, a, give us a quick wave and thank you for all of Go us on, down here as well. There he is, Mr. Matt Cam Smith. There's a delay. There's a delay. He'll, he'll catch up. There he is. There we go. <laughs> We'll turn that down there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the stream. Thanks, Captain Mark, coming on as well. Thanks for having us. And uh, well done to everybody in the chat for getting involved. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, whatever it is you're doing. At least had a bit of sun, which has been absolutely fantastic. Mr. B, the Garage MC up on the roof. Well thank done you. to you. Thank, thank you very you. much for tuning thank in. Uh, but as always, folks, we've been Airliners Live. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Take see it ya. easy. See ya. See ya.